Welcome to Road Atlanta and the BSR MX5 Winter Series and of course the iRacing Esports Network. My name is Chaz Draycott. Alongside me tonight is Tom Jacobs in the booth with Alex Simpson on the cameras. Nice uh, undulating track here for us, Tom, tonight and uh, hopefully some mixed conditions. This should be a, a real belter of an evening for us. Yeah, it should be, shouldn't it? Looking forward to it. Welcome everyone. Hope you're having a, hope you had a good day. Hope you didn't dip too much snow if you're in the UK at the moment. I know we've got it here. But um, yeah, it should be a, an interesting evening, a bit different from Sakuba last week. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And of course, if you didn't see the, uh, the meeting at Sakuba last week, you need to go back and have a look at that. It was one of the greatest meetings we've ever seen. Frantic racing, um, plenty of overtakes, couple of incidents, but it's to be expected on such a small circuit. But I'll tell you what, Tom, I don't think we've commentated on a meeting quite as good as that before, have we? Uh, no, uh, race one for me was probably one of the best races I've ever seen in any esports series. So, um, yeah, as Chad says, if you do have time after this one, go back, get yourself a cup of tea or get into bed and then just watch that Sukuba meeting because it was absolutely unbelievable. And you won't be going to sleep for a while anyway once you watch it. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, Alex, just to bring you in as well, mate. Um, should be uh, interesting to see how these cars once again use that very uh, overly used word in this series, slipstream tonight around that big back straight. Yeah, I think we'll, well I'll see a lot of it. I mean, it's going to be obviously the main overtaking place down into that chicane. And um, yeah, you've always got to get a good run out of the tight right hander. It's always a tricky corner. It's easy to overshoot going in there. You get a bit ambitious trying to get as close as you can. So it's not going to be easy, but yeah, the MX-5 is going to punch quite a big hole in the air. And uh, yeah, we'll see a lot of moves going down in there. I'm looking forward to seeing the uh, train going through the S's. Not going to be uh, super easy. That blind right hand corner is always an interesting one as well. So um, might be a few little accidents and things like that there. So uh, yeah, I'm sure we're uh, we're in for a good one tonight. And of course the MX-5, quite a soft car in terms of uh, suspension setup. So through the S's you will see these things leaning around quite a lot on the weight transfer taking a real uh, Real well, no liberties really on the uh, the car's performance. These guys will have to be really careful with overcorrecting slides and so on. But as Alex just mentioned there, Tom, the uh, the tight right hander before the straight, you could probably lose it quite easily on the brakes, and if not, on the throttle out of here with the uh, with the car being how it is. Yeah, it's it's the, it's the way it comes down to setup really. I think more so for the guys as well. There's quite a lot of places, um, including that one, that can catch you out, especially at the top of the hill. Um, so, uh, after turn one is a really hard one to get right especially in GTE stuff um, the MX-5 will probably bounce off curbs a little bit easier than the 911 RSR but I know that um, yeah it is a tricky course to get right um, uh, but uh, I'm sure the guys will do it properly as they always do and we've got a nice big field of course to watch there tonight we've got 41 cars so far showing from practice through to qualifying qualifying just underway at the moment Marcelo Panion is currently on pole position and he's quite a newcomer to the series Tom we saw him a couple of weeks ago and uh, I think he was at Monza and he put in a really really good performance in his first meeting there a couple of incidents took him out but looks like he's uh, really showing these boys how it's done tonight yeah he's on the timing sheet he's done a 135.4 no 0 0.08 at the moment in qualifying so he's topping out the sheet it'll be interesting to see what he can do against the likes of Luke Cooper and Jason Cooper um, Excite Energy up there again, as they always are, um, and Sim Lab, Sim Lab Racing as well. So yeah, Marcelo should um, should really bring the fight to these guys, and I think it just adds another dimension to these races that we know are so exciting. And I must admit, my OCD has gone a little bit overboard with it though, because he has taken another driver's number because I've not set a number for him in the league. Admittedly, he's <laughs> he's the number 37 car tonight. Jack McIntyre um, has inherited number 40 because of that, but everyone else seems to have the right ones on there. So. It's just the, uh, the visual recognition. If you like me and you see numbers in motorsport, it's a bit of an identity, so you know what it's like. But we've um, got overcast conditions for race one. Normally at Road Atlanta, you do see quite hot conditions. Um, we've seen our fair share of that before, Tom, in uh, World GT and in the ILMS, of course. It's been a bit of a nightmare sometimes, but this might have thrown something into the mix that these guys might not have expected, don't you think? Yeah, I think weather, weather really does come into it, doesn't it? Especially with the new day and night effects as well. Um, but... 
I know when cooler conditions come up, come on around here, it seems to make the lap times a little bit easier for them, especially, as I said, at the top of the hill. Um, and the car doesn't seem to throw itself around so much. The real one you've got to, got to worry about around here, especially in hot weather conditions, is so you come off the hill and you come down the snake and chicane. And it's the left-hander onto like the first long straight. If you come out wide there, which a lot of GT guys do, it can really upset the car quite a lot. Um, probably won't affect the MX-5s as much because they won't be taking as much pace. But if the car does get out of shape out of there, it seems to be really difficult to then correct it. So I'm interested to see how the guys do fare around there um, today. But I'm sure they'll, uh, I'm sure we'll have a few incidents. But I'm sure we'll have a great bit of racing as well. Oh, right. it's definitely one that will uh, provide a lot of close racing tonight. So there's your grid before you, then Tom. If you'd like to do us the honours, mate. Yeah, so Mar Marcelo P uh, Panan, Pagnan, sorry, I can't pronounce your name, in pole position there. Behind him, Luke Cooper for Swift Cooper Esports and Jason Cooper behind him as well in third place. Dave Hampson is in P4 with Alan and Ali behind him in P5 and Ryan Walker in P6, the two XR Energy Esports guys looking to fight their way through. Jamie Ayres in seventh and Jack McIntyre in eighth. Pete Van Gaal in ninth. Alex Cherney in tenth with Kip Stevens in eleventh. Ashley Beard is in twelfth. Behind him is Dries Nice in 13th. 14th is Nick McCarron. 15th is Nathan Davies. 16th, Benjamin Muse. Uh, 17th, James McRitchie. Jack Ashton is in 18th. 19th is Craig Evans. Your own Ursum is in 20th. 21st is Taylor Lane. 22nd, Max Wright. Billy Rose in 23rd. Lorne Murray in 24th with Carl Jacolette in 25th. Scott Malcolm 26th, Carl Hardy in 27th with Craig Williams in 28th. He'd have wanted to get up a bit higher, I think, uh, from P28 there. Michael Barry in 29th with David Ayres in 30th. 31st, Joe McDonald. Rob Graham in 32nd. Craig Jones in 33rd. Dave Christie, 34th. Todd Lugo Vickery in 35th. 36th is Alan McCain. Steve Hefford is 37th. Uh, 38th is Roy Viverke. 39th is Zeri Rizzo. 40th Mikey Key and then rounding out is four, in 41st Anthony Ainsworth as it looks like we are going to be go any second the revs do build up here and we've got a large grid tonight and um, yeah I'll let you I'll let you do the start there Chaz <laughs> fair enough mate good timing though on the uh, on the grid awesome stuff and Marcelo Panion I believe takes his first pole position in this series then so he's got a lot of pressure on you, see, you can see the lights here top of the screen there he is in the number 37 machine. Ready to go. The revs build up. Away they go. Plenty of wheel spin off the line. Looks like Hampton's got a decent start from fourth. Seems to have gained a little bit on Jason Cooper. You've got the two Cooper cars there. Ryan Walker's made a terrible getaway, actually. He's going backwards in the Exide Energy Esports car. It looks like Luke Cooper's going to be putting Marcelo under pressure into turn one. Nice tight line through there. You can see everyone sort of hugging the inside a little bit. You can let the car run outside quite a lot there and keep the momentum, as uh, a lot of people have seen before, especially in the GT cars really hopping it over that crest and it's really difficult to get it over there Tom because it's uh, quite a hefty curb and you can't see it until you're pretty much at it so you've got to really judge it well but looks like these guys have done a good job so far and got cleanly away yeah everyone seems to be through cleanly don't they this is the part of the circuit I was saying if you push it out wide it can upset the car as well everyone see oh, we got a car slightly off in the background which sure that was but um, yeah everyone seems to be through nice and cleanly I haven't really seen anyone dropping down on my uh, on my timing screens here just to the left of me and um, yes Marcelo seems to be pulling away in the number 37 car at the moment doesn't he Charles? he's got Luke Cooper and Jason Cooper chasing him down but these three have now started to bridge a little bit of a gap from the likes of Adam McNally and Dave Hampson they certainly have and that's only going to get bigger as well with the slipstream because if these guys are battling behind them they can quite easily uh, lose the toe as we call it but big long stream of cars flying down this straight then Marcelo absolutely on it at the moment According to the timing screens, he's doing 120 miles an hour to the end, which doesn't seem like much, but to get the MX-5 stopped, it's uh, quite a feat when it's travelling at such pace. It really is a momentum car, as we see Adam McNally, highest-placed Excite Energy Esports car so far. They've had a great season. It didn't start off too well at the first meeting, but they've really turned it around, and they've been very strong since. He crosses the line, then, to finish the first lap tonight. First race is a timed race, 15 minutes. They then get a gauge of how long the races will be in terms of laps, and then from then on, it's a set amount of laps going forward. So, four races for you tonight as well, so plenty of action. I'm hoping that you will stay with it with us for the uh, the entire thing. It is really, really exciting as it gets further and further on in the evening with the reverse grids, of course, that these guys have. It just gets more and more exciting because they're just closer racing because some of the uh, the quicker guys are near the back of the field. And no offence to call them this, but the slower guys are towards the front. And we've seen in a lot of series, Tom, it really does create quite a lot of action. Sometimes incidents, but it's sort of bound to happen now and then, isn't it? 
Yeah, it is. Um, but it's good to get the uh, the AM guys, the slower guys, out the front, and then get gives the uh, gives the pro guys quite a lot of experience having to fight their way through the field. We'll have a look at Jack McIntyre now, and um, yeah, it's 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 nice for them to have that um, have get that experience of running up the front or running at the back because it's you know, sometimes. Well, most of the time, really, the pro guys are always at the front, and then you've got the ham guys at the rear. But we have seen, though, Chaz, you sometimes get the odd wild card ham driver that's just sort of holding their own in a podium place and fighting off the likes of Jason Cooper and uh, Adam McNally. So, um, yeah, it does really bring some exciting racing into it. Yeah, and like you say, hoping to see some of those ham guys doing well tonight, benefit from the reverse grids. Benjamin Mears leading the category at the moment. That is a, uh, designated on the left-hand side of the screen on the little timing tower that we have by the little strips next to their names. Green is Am and blue is Pro. And Jamie Ayres is inside Peter Van Gogh there into the final corner. Sorry, that's Hampson down the inside of Ayres. I apologise. Going for it, you can just see the little designations at the top of the screen. A couple of cars smoking in the pit lane there. Real shame to lose those guys. Oh, it sounds like someone was really giving it everything through turn one. But these cars do like a good bit of tyre squeal. I like a bit of understeer to the, uh, the MX-5s, but 2x2 two two behind Jamie Ayres here into the kink. That's going to be interesting. Peter Van Gogh down the inside of Hampson, McIntyre and Cherney's in there as well. Peter Van Gogh coming out on top, but that's sim level over here looking uh, nice and tasty. Very sort of simple livery, but it just shows that it works. You've got three Excite Energy Esports cars here next to Tom's favourite driver of the green P, Nathan Davis, <laughs> tripling it, giving it the style points. He keeps out of the wall somehow. I don't know how he did that top, but that was fantastic car control. There was someone a bit slower in front of him, though, but uh, I was too busy enjoying the drift. That was amazing. Yeah, I think if he'd held that, that would probably have been my uh, man of the match moment if he managed to kick that on the tarmac. Um, unfortunate for him, though, he was having a nice run, wasn't he? But I'm sure we've got uh, three other races this evening to go, and uh, I'm sure the little green P will get its uh, have its day this evening, as it normally does at one some point. Um, from these rounds but uh, here we go then the Cooper guys coming down the hill towards the chicane really tricky corner to get right this you need to break earlier and turn in than you need than you think you do and uh, Jason Cooper up into second place now and they're catching down your number one man Marcello in the uh, number 37 car and these guys out front Chaz you've got Marcello Pagnan uh, Jason Cooper Luke Cooper and Adam McNally be pulling away from the rest of the field here yeah, they've got 2.6 seconds over Jamie Ayres in that battle between him and two of his teammates, Van Gogh and McIntyre, who will be wearing number 37 for the next race. I made sure of that, don't you worry. Alex Cherney in the number 19 car is behind them as well, but his teammates up towards the front of the field, Luke and Jason Cooper, two wheels over the kink, really going for it here. But Adam McNally put in the fastest lap of the race last time round, so got to keep our eye on him. He's always got the pace as Adam. He's been practising a lot recently. And the uh, the extra support these guys are getting from XI Energy, and of course all the support they had at the uh, the Auto Sports Show was fantastic. So good to see so many guys turn out for that. And they were representing very strongly. And Adam McNally's going to hope to do that tonight. He's really close to the back of Luke Cooper there, really going for it. As we just caught a little glimpse there of the uh, the clouds moving over, making way for the sunshine. You might see it revert itself again in a minute, but it's just one of those extra little touches I still can't get over. I absolutely love watching it. Uh, Adam now has got the toe but the, the thing is about getting slipstream like this Tom is if you start out of the corner really close to the car in front of you you don't get as much chance to get so much of a slingshot really do you you want to be further back and still within the range if that makes sense yeah you want to be about three tenths behind the car I think is about the sweet spot we've just seen now Jason Cooper is going to try and go for the lead and he does wonderful and, uh, he is through Brood lovely move that uh, yeah. really well really well put forward he just didn't just break late it was a real nice Danny Ricardo move late on the brakes there and, and got it done but yeah as you were saying you need about I think about three tenths of a second probably the sweet spot coming off the corner any closer than that and you're not going to really get much of a uh, much of a slingshot on the other car and then it's going to be well they're just going to tuck it behind you and then take the position back towards the end of the straight again so um, yeah it's all about tactics especially around a track like this and the tactics of uh, these guys actually battling each other, you would have thought it closed them up to the guys behind. But Jamie Ayres, Pete Van Gogh and Jack McIntyre are now 3.6 seconds off the back of Adam McNally. So they've gained nearly a second on him in that previous lap. So this slipstream is keeping them together and keeping them away from that gaggle in the background. But you can see the three sim lab cars just at the top of your screen then. Really, really nose to tail. Just having a quick look further down the order, Benjamin Mears is leading the AM class at the moment, 16th overall. He's got Taylor Lane of Beast Racing behind him. Oh, big jump there for Ben Mears out of the left-hander. Brings it back down to earth. 
And he's got a good gap over Taylor behind him. He's got 2.7 seconds. Taylor's gained four places so far. As we look at the big movers, Steve Hefford is the biggest mover, I believe. 16 places gained. Cesare Rizzo gained 15, and Alan McCain has gained 10. Anthony Ainsworth, actually. Good shout out to Anthony. He's gained 11, but there is Steve Hefford in the very distinct bright yellow highlighted Sim Lab livery. It's bright yellow wheels. Not quite sure what happened to Steve, really. He seemed to have started quite further down the order. Not sure whether he got a uh, disqualification from qualifying or something from the meeting before, but he's fighting his way back through and showing that that's not going to stop him. But you've got to think that he'll uh, be hoping for a good reverse grid in this one, Tom. Yeah, he will be, won't he? he we know how quick uh, Steve is and can be. Um, I'm sure he'll make his way up, possibly. He might even get the top 10 here if he gets a real move on. We know how quick he, quick he is. Um, and he seems to be the driver that everyone wants on their team at the moment. But he's firmly happy at SimLab. And, um, yeah, I think if he does get a decent reverse grid, he could be on for a win tonight, chap. Yeah, definitely. He's got the pace. But look at this lot. <laughs> two by two by two, then. We had uh, Kip Stevens in there with Van Gogh. Oh, there's a car around. That's McIntyre, surely. I think it was Jack McIntyre. It's purple highlights on a sim lab livery, so I hope I got that right. But yeah, McIntyre backwards there. Not quite sure how he managed that. But none of these guys hit him, and that's the uh, that's the miracle of it, really. But you see in there, Dave Hampson. Uh, in front of him, you've got Ryan Walker, Jack Ashton, Dries Nice, and Ashley Beards. That's four XI Energy Esports cars. Honestly, everywhere you look in this championship, there's XI Energy Esports cars. They just seem to be everywhere. Look at them. It's just a train. Those boys just pop up everywhere, and they're always in battles with the, with the massive names in this championship. And it's great to see him doing so well, to be honest, because, I mean, just like, uh, just like me, I think everyone else sort of doubted it at the beginning of the championship, as we see McIntyre then into turn one. Is there going to be contact with Walker? Oh, he's put a wheel on the grass. How he did not get hit there, I do not know. That was, oh, look, love the little J-turn at the end as well. That was wonderful, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, he did very well there to keep out of trouble, didn't he? He had a lot of cars round him, um, a huge pack there, and he just sort of give it the old driver one when you do the tutorial for anyone who's ever done that um, most difficult thing in the world um, but he managed to get it facing the right way in the end with a little j-turn and uh, yeah he's back out now p17 not doing too badly he's just behind uh, bedroom use and taylor lane as well the two am guys that are leading the am race at the moment well, he's coming under a bit of pressure now from craig evans and steve hefford as well i'm saying earlier how quick hefford is Chaz. so um yeah, it's not too bad for him. It, like, at least he did get hit and he can start making his way up through the field again. Yeah, definitely. And he's, he's always wants to fight back his Steve Hefford. He never gives up. Alex Cherney there having a go at Jamie Ayres. Two heavyweights of this championship. I'm not calling them fat. I'm just saying that they're good. They've got all the XI Energy Esports cars behind them. And I tell you what, this is what I mean. They're just they're always there. Look at them. <laughs> just chasing them down again. But Cherney's not going to give up chasing Ayres. Cherney, previous champion of this championship, of course. That's not too much of a mouthful to say, but these uh, these guys obviously do four seasons over a year. They obviously have the spring, summer, winter, and autumn series. Not in that order, of course. I got that wrong, but Cherney has won one of them before. I believe it was the summer series. Um, as you can see now, he's just trying to line it up and get a good run out of there. Try and keep it smooth. Off he goes, but he just doesn't seem to have the run out of that time. It just didn't seem to accelerate very well there. Yeah, I think um, not really too sure what happened to him there, to be honest. We know how quick Alex is. But here we go now, we're going to look at the slipstream as he comes up on Jamie Ayres. And it's, it's a strong one this one, the closer you get the faster it's going to go. I don't think he's been close enough this time. But he is coming under pressure now from Ashley Beard and Dries Nice as well. All the Excite cars swarming around them like a pack of bees. Have a little look up the inside for the number 28, Ashley Beard. He can't quite get it done in that Excite car. But yeah, this has proven out to be a real fierce battle, isn't it, Chaz? We just see Steve Hefford going up the inside of Craig Evans there and Hefford taking P17. Jack McIntyre has now fallen back from P19. If there was a, there's any fans out there of Jack McIntyre after his earlier spin, but he's still maintaining the top 20. But look at this, Chaz. This is an absolute gaggle of cars going through turn one and really fighting hard here. And I'd, I'd love to be piloting one of those cars at the moment. Oh, yeah, but they've got a really good bird's eye view of what's going on, especially Dave Hampson. He can see all the Excite cars and see him dicing around. He's got Kip Stevens wedged firmly behind him in the uh, blue, white and pink Cooper Esports car. Swift Cooper Esports, sorry. Well, Jamie Ayres still leading the way in the sole SimLab car in there. He's waiting for his teammates Van Gool and McCarran to provide backup in the background. And then just behind them, actually, is Ben Mears. Still lead oh, there's an Excite car around. It's Dries Nice. Sorry, Dries Nice. I always do that to his name, mate. I'm really sorry. But Dries Nice has put it backwards. Not sure whether he got help or... 
well, you never know. It, it could be that kerb on the exit. Everyone knows that kerb at Road Atlanta. It's an absolute nightmare. And it's easy to, uh, to bounce over it too hard and lose control of the car. Luke Cooper seems to have dropped off this battle that we're looking at now, then. McNally third, Panyon second, Jason Cooper in the lead. Side by side is Panyon and Cooper. And who's going to be the last of the late breakers? Jason Cooper's been great on the brakes so far. Panyon down the inside. McNally a bit late on the brakes as well. He's going to try and get a bit of a cutback. You can just see the different lines and how they work through there, but you've got to really be tactical in this car, Tom, like we've said before. It's, it's a very uh, momentum-based machine to get around the track quickly, but you've got to really have your wits about you and plan your moves out, haven't you? Yeah, you have, and Panyon's out in front at the moment, uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to get it. It's a bit like horse racing, I think, in MX-5. <laughs> the car that's in front doesn't normally end up taking the win, does it? Um... But yeah, it's it's major tactics with when it comes to slipstreaming in the MX-5, and um, as you say, it's a real momentum car. And if you have a slow entry, you're going to have a slow exit um, at the end of the day. It's a great car to drive and easy to drive, but very hard to master. And also, I think one of the hardest cars on the service to actually race in a big pack scenario, just because of how it can be. Oh, one minute I've got full grip and the car's perfect, and you put one wheel on the grass and around it goes. It's, it's not like an HPD or something where they're quite forgiving car to drive. Um, if it does get sideways, they're an absolute nightmare to try and uh, try and save. But we're on board with Adam McNally now, the number 478 Excite Energy Esports car. And he's coming up behind Marcelo Panion and Jason Cooper. And here we go. We're going to see the slipstream now as they come up the hill. Of course, Jason Cooper will have slipstream as well on your lead driver. And... Uh, it's not really coming into play, is it, Chaz? I mean, he's gaining slowly, but I thought the uh, the slipstream would have been stronger there. We see Jason Cooper's going to go for the lead on Marco Panion. Uh, sorry, Marcelo Panion. And he does get the move done, going through the chicane. And pretty much, I think this is going to be their final lap, Chaz. So, really, it is anyone's guess at the moment. Yeah, one more lap to go. Going to give it everything they've got. Marcelo's definitely not backing off, though. It's been great to see him doing so well in the series after not being in that long. Now he's always been there or thereabouts and Jason Cooper of course is a consistent race winner in the championship but I think with the slipstream down the straight there Jason got that much of a good run that it just wasn't affecting McNally as much they were both staying the same distance apart but they were both gaining on Panion so I think uh, he was a bit of a sitting duck there as Marcelo two wheels over the kink and you can just see that weight transfer I mentioned earlier you can see the, uh, the live timing gap at the bottom there through sector one you can, uh, I was just about to say the weight transfer, you can see it leaning left, leaning right, hops over this kerb, you don't want to get too much of it because it'll bounce you onto that one, there's a nasty bit of gravel on the outside of that as well and if you catch that in this car it can really chuck you out, I think that's what Dries Nice did earlier as well, he's currently down in 31st place now, real shame for him but you never know what a re reverse grid could throw up, there's a bit of smoke there and some tyre marks so a car might have gone off but for the slipstream for the final time Tom, if McNally gets a good run here he could be in with a shout with this but I think it's going to be between Panion and uh, Jason Cooper. Yeah, I think it will be. We're looking at Panyon now. He's going to have it going up the hill. And here we go then. He's going to have a little look to the right. There's nothing really that Jason Cooper can do. Will he get the move done before the exit? Panyon moves out to the right slightly. He's going to go and take the outside line going into this. This could be an interesting one because Jason Cooper's got the inside line and could go late on the brakes. They both brake hard coming down into the chicane. Jason Cooper sticks his oh. line. Oh, that might be a slow down that one. He might have got that there. And Panyon does come out the uh, the victor there. But here we go then. Adam McNally as well is going to have a little look on Jason Cooper as they come into the last corner. And Adam McNally's got it done. And I do think there, Chaz, that Jason Cooper might have got a slowdown for coming over that corner there. Too he, tight. Yeah, he certainly did. But Panyon takes the first win of the evening. Brilliant result for him. Great to see him getting a first win so early on and being in the championship. Luke Cooper makes it two. Cooper's in the top five. Journey 5th, Air 6, Beard, Ashton, Stevens and Van Gaal round up that fantastic battle for the top 10. Ryan Walker made a bit of a comeback after that uh, slow start to finish 11th. Good result for Ryan. And you see the rest of the cars gradually making their way over the line. Alex Cherney's off on the outside of Turn 1 there. Not quite sure how he's managed that. More battles across the line then. This is Rizzo and Viverke. Viverke's got it done, it seems. Sorry, that's McRitchie and Viverke. I apologise. Boy Viverke there. We saw him do really well last week at Tsukuba. Nice to see him... Uh, Getting involved with some battles this week. He'll be hoping for a good reverse grid as well in the AM class to get him up there. But yeah, really nice, uh, solid race one there, Tom. Not too many incidents. We saw just one or two cars go off now and then. But yeah, it was nice and clean as we, we suddenly, yeah, we'd suddenly seen a lot of clean race ones in this series because it's the qualifying sort of uh, spreads everyone out in terms of their pace a little bit more naturally than the reverse grids, doesn't it? 
Yeah, it does. Um, and I think that's better for the guys in race one. It allows, allows the real fast guys to get their pip their race race one win in as they normally do. See someone going very wide there. <laughs> Scared the and, life um, out take, taking out the cameraman in the process. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think it's that's why we always get that in race one. But race two, three and four, as we know, will be uh, will be a little bit more hectic, I think. So Marcelo Panion takes your race win for the first win tonight for race one. And Adam McNally rounds out the uh, the front row, so takes P2. Jason Cooper in P3 rounds out the podium with Luke Cooper behind him in P4. Alex Cherney in fifth with Jamie Ayres in sixth. Ashley Beard in seventh and Jack Ashton in eighth with Kip Stevens in ninth. Pete Van Gaal in tenth and Ryan Walker in eleventh. Another one taking the cameraman out there. Twelfth uh, is Nick McCarron. Benjamin Muse in thirteenth. Steve Hefford fourteenth. Taylor Lane in fifteenth. Sixteenth was Craig Evans. Jack McIntyre was seventeenth and Billy Rose was in eighteenth. Uh, 19th, Carl Hardy, Joe McDonald in 20th, Carl uh, Jacolette in 21st, Alan McCain in 22nd, Jerome Ursum in 23rd, Zari Rizzo in 24th, 24th sorry, with Roy Viverke in 25th, James McRitchie in 26th, with Michael Barry behind him in 27th, Craig Jones and Mikey Key for Result Clothing were both 28th and 29th respectively, Dries, ne- Dries Nice, sorry, I've done the same as Chaz in 30th, <laughs> Scott Malcolm in 31st, Dave Hampson 32nd, Max Wright in 33rd, then your non finishers were Anthony Ainsworth, Tyler Lugo Vickery, and Lorn Murray. Cracking stuff. Thanks very much, Tom. And of course, that was the first of four races that we have tonight. Uh, mixed conditions, as you can see, it's got a little bit sunnier towards the end of the session, which is uh, interesting to see whether they carry this on into race two. I think they do reset the conditions for each one, but that just makes it even more interesting, I suppose. Nice uh, variation over the course of the evening. So with any, uh, without further ado, I believe, Alex, we'll have the reverse grid wheel for the first time tonight. Indeed they have. <coughs> Your right. come coming with 35, by the way. Oh, 35, straight in there. Right, give a spin. So, yeah. Close, I'm afraid. We're 35, it's the other side of the board. It is, it is a full minus two. Right then, well that would have been Max Wright, sorry, with Dave Hampson on the front row with him. However, it's actually Scott Malcolm on pole position for Auto McNock Hill, I believe. Um, Dries Nice is actually on the front row with him, so it worked out quite nicely there, to uh, pardon the pun. But yeah, Mikey Key is going to be third on the grid with his teammate Craig Jones, and then Mick Barry behind him as well. So three result clothing cars there near the front of the grid in the top five. Tom, Alex and I will join you again in about 10, 15 minutes time on the Iris and Esports Network for race two of three. Um, sorry, race two of four of the evening. I, I hope there's not three races anyway. I hope there's four. But um, we'll be back with you in 10, 15 minutes. Don't go away.
Welcome back to the iRacing Esports Network and the BSR MX5 Winter Series back at Road Atlanta for the second race of four this evening. Chaz Draycott here alongside Tom Jacobs and Alex Simpson on the cameras. And we've got the first of our three reverse grid races tonight. We had the reverse wheel in the uh, first one, which gave us a full minus two. So two drivers missed out, which would have been on the uh, lead lap or one lap down. That puts Scott Malcolm on pole position alongside Dries Nice of Excite Energy Esports. He'll be very grateful for that. And we've got three result clothing cars. Mikey Key, Craig Jones and Mick Barry. Mick Ritchie is sixth. Then you've got Viverke, Rizzo, Ursum, McCain, Jacolette, Joe McDonald rounding out your top 12 there. Carl Hardy, Billy Rose, Jack McIntyre, Craig Evans, Taylor Lane for Beast Racing. 18th is Steve Heffer, Sim Lab. Uh, Benjamin Mears is 19th. He was the top arm in that last race, I believe. Nick McCarron is 20th. And then you've got Ryan Walker, Pete Van Gogh, Kip Stevens, Jack Ashton, Ashley Beer, Jamie Ayers, Alex Jenny, Luke Cooper, Jason Cooper, Adam McNally. And the lights are on and they're away. See the whole field there streaming away. Great shot of them all going down the straight. Looks like a really good start from Mikey Key, actually, in third place in the result clothing car. Scott Malcolm didn't get away too well, but he's kept the lead into turn one. He runs a little bit wide to Dries. Nice. I think, oh, Dries is around and he's caused a pile up. Well, I say pile up. Two of them went off. I was expecting a lot more than that there as they came out from behind the trees on my screen. Oh, there's a car backwards. That looked like McNally, I think. Or was it still Dries? Nice rolling back. Whole field spreading their way through now down the S's. And it's Scott Malcolm that leads the way still. He's got Mikey Key behind him, Mick Barry. Then he's got James McRitchie, Roy Viverke, your own Ursum. Really good for the AM drivers at the moment. Oh, Carl Jackalette around. Big crash in the background. Really, really big crash in the, uh, in the background there. Cars going down the order. I can see Rob Graham, Carl Hardy, Carl Jackalette. Real shame for those guys. Let's have a look back then. Here is... Oh, no. Oh, wow. It's already happened in front of them there. McIntyre involved. Oh, and that's Kip Stevens into it. One of the Automat cars involved. Max Wright there as well. It's just one of them, isn't it? Where you, you're going over a crest of a hill and before you know it, there's, there's cars in front of you. You can slam on and get on the brakes. And you can over-rotate it. But speaking of over-rotating it, these guys background. are going to be rotating their positions at this rate. Really, really. Mikey Key on the yeah, outside yeah, of Scott Malcolm then. Malcolm back down the inside later on the brakes. Straight lines it a little bit, but keeps the lead. Hard but fair defence there from Scott Malcolm. McRitchie's giving it everything as well behind them. A couple of guys really trying to stay with them there. It's very, very close. On to the uh, second lap then. Scott Malcolm in the bright yellow team map livery car leads the way. I did say he was racing for Automat, not killed the previous one. I do apologise. Fastest lap of the race, of course, for Malcolm. Key under pressure from McRitchie. Nearly making contact. Mick Barry gets a great run. Just about misses the back of him. Always a little bit out of shape, though. Nearly losing it, but very, very close stuff there. Through the S's once again, over the kink. Down the hill they go, and I believe... Have we got a Mr. Jacobs back with us yet? Yeah, don't worry, I'm here, Chas. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> you went away in the break, and I didn't know whether you were back or not then, sorry. Um, no, I'm Mick, here. Mick Barry in fourth. Um, bit of a chaotic start there, Tom. Um, we, we were expecting an incident or two tonight, though, so it, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's come about at last... Yeah, it's, I think it's just one of them, isn't it? Um, you're always you're always going to get incidents, especially in race two and race three, um, and leading on to race four, I think as well. But unfortunate for the guys out there. But this is what I said before about it. You know, at the start coming around that last corner, you have and have an incident and get the car out too wide, it can cause some major issues. But at the moment we've got Scott Malcolm holding his own against Mikey Key, James Ritchie, Michael Barry, and Roy uh, Viverke, and uh, it's all Am drivers at the front now. Chas, this is really is their chance to shine at the moment. Yeah, it certainly is. Forget Monday night. Well, look at Roy Viverke on the grass. All four wheels off the circuit there, giving it everything. The full Paris Dakar. And he's not quite made it, though. Mikey Key. Oh, big shoulder barge from Scott Malcolm there. I think Mikey just sort of straight lined it a little bit into the second part there. I don't know whether he knew that uh, Scott was there. And there's race one, uh, third place finish. Anyway, here's uh, Jason Cooper with race one winner. Marcelo Panion, great drive by Marcelo in that one. They're making their way back through the field. McRitchie goes to the front of the field. He's battling with Malcolm. You can just see this massive field of cars there as they go down the straight. Oh, Malcolm's around in the wall. He's rolled it over, I think. He lost it out of turn one. There he is. Oh, dear. Poor Scott. He has no look at the front of the field. He's, I don't know how he did that. He might have put the curb or something on the exit of turn one. It's so easy to do on this track because... Turn one is such a committed corner, and you're going so quickly in there. It's easy to understand why. And there he is. There is the incident. Oh, it just goes straight in, doesn't it? 
Well, over it goes. Luckily not taking anyone out with him as well. A real shame for Scott, but that puts James McRitchie with, again, I'm going to mention it, the greatest YouTube name I've seen relating to his surname. And the number 22 machine, doing my favourite number proud. The Verke second, though. Roy's been really quick recently in the uh, standings, Tom, so hopefully he can chase him down and put up a good fight for the lead as Joe McDonald seems to be off the track and having an issue. Not quite sure whether he's, uh, he's back on or not. He's kept his place in 16th. But he was lit up red on our timing tower on the left end, so that would have meant he's gone off. So I'm not quite sure what he's done. Yeah, I'm not, not really too sure what's what's happened there either. But just uh, just going back to Scott Malcolm, unfortunate for him. He always seems to have issues when he's at the front, Scott. So, uh, but I'm sure he can uh, come back from that as he always does. We've got a brilliant fight here at the back. Well, at the front actually, Ryan Walker <laughs> to at the back. Ryan Walker defending from pit the likes of Pete Van Gaal, Mikey Key, and Jamie Ayres at the moment. And uh, this agreement to have be a real, um, I wouldn't say scrappy race, Chaz, but we've had a few more incidents than we did in race one. And um, But we're having some brilliant battles on our rounds, aren't we? And we've got uh, James McRitchie out the front at the moment. And um, yeah, he seems to be having a real solid race at the moment in your favourite numbered car. And uh, trying to pull away from Roy Viverke as well. So um, yeah, I think it's, it's an interesting one. You've got the Excite boys are trying to fight their way through the field again. And they've come under pressure from the Sim Lab guys as well. So I, th I still think it's anyone's to play for at the moment. And look at those gains on the left as well. Walker 17, Van Gaal 17, Ayres 20, Ashton 14, Panyon 20, Cooper 17, Hampson 19, uh, James, uh, Brian Holmes 25. He was commentating on the uh, on the YouTube stream halfway through the first race. So I don't think he was in the first one, but yeah, he's certainly making his mark now. 26 places gained. Awesome stuff for the Exxon Energy Esports driver. But um, it just shows that when there is an incident, it can muddle the field up even more, no matter what you do with the reverse grid. So these guys going for it. You can see there the gap from the leader back and down to 20th place, 15 seconds. That just shows you how close it is. Ryan Walker leading this battle then. With Mikey Key. Uh, sorry, not Mikey Key. That's uh, Mick Barry. Van Gaul's in there as well, side by side. His teammate Jamie Ayres. Two by two, they go into the chicane. They're nearly on the grass on the left-hand side. There was Walker. I think he did dip two wheels. Look at the commitment by Van Gaal. Late on the brakes. Gives him the room. Good racing by Walker there. Gives him the space. Jamie Ayres is going to go around the outside of his teammate now as they go over the crest. Mikey Key's coming under... I keep calling him Mikey Key. Mick Barry, I'm really sorry. Coming under pressure from uh, Cherney as well in the Swift Cooper Esports car. But once again, Tom, we've got a really good gaggle developing here. And this could hopefully... Well, I hope it doesn't uh, turn up into an accident, but look at this on board now from Cherney. You can just see how close these guys do get together on track. And hopefully this yeah. stays nice and clean. Yeah, hopefully it will. But it's going to be an interesting one going over the kink. Cherney puts it out really wide to give, I think it was Van Gaal side by side with him, a lot of room there. And uh, yeah, this is going to prove to be a real fierce battle to the finish. Walker and Ayers are starting to pull away a little bit of a gap over the guys behind them. You don't want to be going out too wide there. Can really unsettle the car and cause a lot of damage as we've seen before in race one. So um, yeah, this is proven to be a great fight and there's a real gaggle of cars, both pro and am drivers, all mixed in at the front at the moment as we look a little bit further back. We've got Dave Christie fighting Taylor Lane. That's for uh, that's for P17, that one. Taylor Lane driving for Beast Racing this evening. Christie has a little dart the inside and it pushes out Taylor Lane wide nearly pulls the front bumper off so uh, <laughs> yeah interesting racing at the moment Chaz and I think this one is still going to go down to the wire yeah certainly will nice little scrap there between the two arms of course nice bit of uh, contact never hurt anybody I suppose Craig Evans here trying to chase down Craig Williams bit of the grass there for the Northern Lights racing driver with their GT Omega sponsorship of course very striking livery on that car all their liveries look brilliant on their cars this year. Bit of sideways action for Evans. Look at this side by side. That's Jack Ashton and Peter Van Gaal. As they come across the line to start lap 6 of 10. Still side by side in turn 1. Van Gaal committing around the outside. You can just see how wide this track actually is as you go up there. But there's not really many lines that you can take into this kink, Tom. It's, it's a very optimised corner. You can see how the track gets a little bit thinner there, Jay. Jamie Ayres just appears out of nowhere, or that's actually um, Panyon, sorry, I thought it was Jamie Ayres, but he's actually ahead of these guys, not behind them. Down the S's, great shot as we follow them then from what I believe is the chopper cam. Onto the brake through the left hander, and you'll see the size of this kerb, look at that. And there's a little jump on the exit, and it's so easy to unsettle any car over there, isn't it, Tom, when you're really on the limit? 
Yeah, it, it's a real issue, and I found it so much when we were racing in GT cars um, around here. The Porsche especially, I don't know how bad it is on the MX-5, it doesn't seem to unsettle it as much, um, but it can cause some real damage to the car, and it really tends to get out of shape, especially if you get it on the gravel. Um, what I tend to do is try and not put it out that wide, but it's obviously not the not as quick a line. As you see, uh, Panyan here, let's have a little look up at Jack Ashton, and here comes the slipstream. He's got the slipstream as well from Van Gaal in the Slim Lab car, number 39 cars. They come down towards towards the chicane now. This is a really easy, easy, nice um, overtaking opportunity here, and Panyan does make the move done, and uh, there's yeah, brilliant move from him there. And now he'll be going down to uh, hunt down the likes of Alex Cherney and Jamie Ayres, Chas. Just to quickly look back as well, Jeroen Ersam and Craig Williams have both been off the track and flown down the order. Not quite sure what happened. Oh, Jason Cooper, really big slide at the last corner there. But yeah, Jeroen Ersam and uh, Craig Williams very suddenly dropped down the order there. I'm not sure whether they had to come together out of the uh, left-hander up the hill or something, but shame to see them fall down. But yeah, Marcelo Panion really making his mark tonight. Brilliant move committed as anything through the kink that was some proper pace he carried through there it was ahead of Cherney and Ayres still battling away and McRitchie and uh, oh there's there's the end of Williams and uh, Jeroen Ersam oh there's Jeroen Ersam in the middle of the road he's obviously just tried to keep it out of the way I had that in World GT last night I had to park the car in the middle of the track tries to get it going and yeah it's just absolutely done here we go then thank you Alex for uh, continuing to strive to get further and further back as we look oh he loses it on the way in is he going to put it in the wall yeah Overcorrected. In the wall he goes, and we're probably going to see Williams any second now. Oh, yep, yeah, there it is. Oh, and a big hit from Hampson as well, actually. Didn't see him go down the order, but yeah, two very big hits there. Just trying to avoid him, but there's not a lot you can do there. It's a real shame. But this is the battle for third place then. Walker, Ayres, Cherney. Sorry, for Verke and Walker, I apologise. I thought Walker, uh, Viverke was up with McRitchie and he's clearly not, he's away with it and Walker is second now so highest placed pro driver at the moment, Exit Energy Sports are going to be very happy with that Tom, it's nice to see uh, the consistency that these guys are having especially uh, keeping it going through tonight. Yeah it is isn't it, you've only got to look at the timing sheets to see the pro guys, I mean Ryan Walker's up 19 places from where he started and he's now sitting in P2, so you've got another one of the Swift Cooper Esports cars down there on the grass sure who that was there Chad. I think it was Luke Cooper actually who's uh, he's filing round at the back at the moment but yeah he's up uh, 19 places there look at Jamie Ayres um, you know Panyon is up 25 places as well I mean Brian Holmes is now up 30 places from where he started <laughs> so you know they've been fighting their way through the field and it just goes to show how good these guys really are in this MX-5 and they could probably lap a uh, probably lap an MX-5 around here faster than I could in a oh. GT we've got someone else off Holmes and that's Brian Holmes. <laughs> so there's commentator's oh. curse if you ever wanted to see it. <laughs> he was up 30 places and now he's sat in the pits having repairs done. So uh, apologies there, Brian, because I think I might have caused that one. We shouldn't have brought attention to it, should we? We should have just let him go. Just yeah. <laughs> leave him alone. He's going to hit the kink and spin it the other way. Oh, no. he's. Oh, no. Oh, he's just overcorrected it. And MX5 plus concrete wall. No, it just <laughs> doesn't work. Doesn't work at all, unfortunately, Brian. Jamie Ayres then third place. Viverke's dropped down to fifth now. He's been swapped by these pro drivers. But Ryan Walker's going to want to try and hold on to this ahead of Ayres for these last two laps and be the highest placed pro driver in the race. I'm sure Alex Cherney will be having to go at Jamie as well. So Ryan will be uh, hoping for that to happen. There is Taylor Lane of Beast Racing. He has Craig Evans chasing him down. And he's stuck to the back of him as they go down the straight then going to probably pull out and try it on the brakes you want to do it just nice and gently because you can turn it around just for uh, Mac Johnson there you go mate you've got the team names up on the left of the screen for you just so you can see it's definitely Beast Racing definitely Taylor Lane as uh, that was Tyler Lugo Vickery going straight on there at the chicane and Craig Evans has got past uh, Taylor now after he got a bit of a bad exit there he was in 13th place it seemed to be uh, unlucky for some but he's giving it a go back though he's giving, it, uh, giving what he gets here to Taylor Lane actually Tom and uh, I'm sure we can have words with him afterwards time to calm down, but I'm not going to tell him if he keeps getting places out of it. Two wheels over the first corner. Yeah, he's... Um, <laughs> interesting times there for Taylor Lane, really. He's uh, doing beast racing proud out there as we look towards the front of the grid again. And uh, Mr. Ryan Walker of Excite Energy Esports is uh, he's really having to defend, though, Chaz. Coming towards the end of the race from Jamie Ayres and Alex Cherney. And Panyon as well, Marcello Panyon. 
he's, uh, he's not the one to hang about this evening, is he, Chaz? Coming into the series, not don't see that name too often um, racing. And uh, here he is now. So if you look back from Ryan Walker at the rear bumper, Jamie Ayres is going to go up to the inside. We've also got Alex Cherney in there as well, and they're going to go three wide now along the straight. And it looks like Alex Cherney is going to get, make his way through. Is he going to get it done? I uh, don't know whether he is. Jamie Ayres goes late on the brakes does move up into P2 now so Ryan Walker there Chaz was the one who uh, who missed out there look at Panion though really tactical driving there he broke early got on the curve got a nice wide entrance into the corner and look at the run he's got didn't need any slipstream he's got past Walker and now he's going to have a great run on Cherney as well he's gone a little bit deep on the inside I think he could have let it run out a bit further to carry the momentum but again he's doing it there look you can see he's breaking early wider line he's going to try and get the launch out the corner Ayres gets a bit of a poor run Cherney's on his right just watch Marcelo at the bottom of your screen. He just gets on the brakes early. Oh, contact between Ayres and Cherney. Marcelo's going to try and capitalise on that. He's not going to go anywhere there, though. Cherney defending it nice and smoothly. Ayres nearly making contact again. This is great racing. Really close stuff between these guys. They've been racing together a while. And this is really... Oh, no, I say that. And that oh. happens. Cherney turned around. Marcelo tries to get out of it. Ryan Walker. Walker around the outside. And look at Roy Verke on the left-hand side of these boys. He's going to go through, says, get out of the way, Alex. I'm going to go past you on here. And Ryan Walker to the front of this group once again. <laughs> Fair enough, it was really opportunistic. And it was good of Panyan to get out of it. Jamie Ayers coming straight back at him, though, with a big hole in the right-hand side of that mix five. And we're on the last lap already, Tom. This uh, Another exciting race has flown by. But this is the, uh, the final opportunity for these boys to slipstream before the end of the race. But Cherney, it looks like he's out of the race now, unfortunately. But Walker against Ayers, then, for the highest place pro driver with McRitchie. What a drive. He's just driven away with it. He's got a six, nearly seven-second lead on these boys. Fantastic stuff. Yeah, great for McRitchie there, especially as an AM driver as well. And I know we, we don't want to say that they're slow or anything, but McRitchie, a real solid drive in the number 022 car there. Absolutely fantastic stuff. He crosses the line to take the race two win. James at Ritchie is the winner but the one we want to see is the one behind and it looks like Alex uh, that's Jamie Ayres just gets it ahead of Ryan Walker Marcello Panion and Roy Verke in there as well um, unfortunate there for Alex Cherney who did miss out at the end some more battles here you've got the likes of Craig Evan Jones and Hefford Hefford on the outside he's going to try and swing it in looks like Craig oh. Evans is going to get it done but Chaz, there's been some brilliant racing we've seen in race two. And this is Zari Rizzo and Taylor Lane as well. Oh. Uh, Lane seems to have got that one done. But the MX-5 there steps out just a whisker going over the line. But Chaz, what a race. And I think that's one to remember. Yeah, definitely is. That was brilliant to watch. Awesome stuff. Anthony Ainsworth, a nice little drift there in turn one. But yeah, the battle down, up and down this order is just always great to see. And... A track like this, you wouldn't expect it to be that great because you would have thought that, like Alex was saying at the top of the broadcast, that one of the only opportunities, really, the, the main one you'd be looking at is that back straight. But these guys are going into corners everywhere, side by side, giving it what they've got. And we saw a really, really good scrap there all the way throughout. Just, well, it was just nice to see the, um, the competition between the AMs and the pros again. I mean, there's no definite these guys are quicker than the others, but... Obviously, they are categorised to be like that just to make things fair and give everyone their own championship to fight for. But awesome to see them all scrapping together and a well-deserved win as well for an AM driver in James McRitchie. And uh, we've seen him show a lot of pace recently. A lot of these guys have, I think, said that he uh, he should be in the pro category. But he's he's been slightly inconsistent, so it does sort of mean that he is entitled in that AM category. But yeah, really, really well-deserved drive that because. Um, well, he, he just got away with it, didn't he, at the end of the day? It's, he just did everything he needed to do. Sometimes you can be at the front of the field and it's easy to make mistakes when you're just sort of hot lapping on your own rather than following other drivers. But, yeah, great to see as he uh, blows it up on pit entrance there, unfortunately, <laughs> in, uh, in celebration. He goes, here are then, team. Rebuild my engine for race three. That'll do. <laughs> yeah, a really great win for him there. And I, I think he'll be loving that. He's, um, as you say, yeah, he's been a bit inconsistent sometimes there. Um, but at the end of the day, he's a bit of a Max Verstappen, isn't he? I think if you stick him out in the front um, at the lead of the pack, he can really make it work. So, uh, yeah, a, a great race there for James McRitchie and, and well-deserved. So he running down the results then, James McRitchie, as I say, is your race two winner. 
behind him, Jamie Ayres in second and Ryan Walker in third with Marcello Panion in fourth. A brilliant battle between those guys with Roy Viverke to add a little bit of spice into the mix as well. Jason Cooper finished sixth behind him, Pete Van Gaal. Jack Ashton in eighth with Mikey Key in ninth. Nick McCarron in 10th with Michael Barry in 11th. Craig Evans and uh, Craig Jones in 12th and 13th, respectively, with Steve Hefford there, Chaz, down in 14th at the moment. So I'm sure he'll be wanting to come back up for the field for race three. Tyler Lugo Vickery in 15th. 16th was David Ayres and Dave Hampson in 17th. Ashley Beard was in 18th. Uh, 19th, we have Lorne Murray. Dave Christie in 20th with Taylor Lane in 21st. Zari Rizzo, 22nd. Anthony Ainsworth in 23rd. Alan McCain, 24th. Adam McNally for Excite Energy Esports in 25th. They'll be looking to come back as well. Um, Alex Cherney in 26th. Luke Cooper, 27th. Brian Holmes in 28th. And then I think from that on, from Brian Holmes, sorry, when you're non finishers So it was Jerome Erson, Craig Williams, Joe McDonald, Billy Rose, Rob Graham, Scott Malcolm, Benjamin Muse, and Max Wright and Kip Stevens, I believe. So, uh, yeah, a lot of retirements in that one there, Chaz. Yeah, that incident towards the beginning, uh, well, a couple of incidents towards the beginning, did uh, take quite a lot of casualties with it. A real shame that is, to be honest, especially for Dries Nice as well. He started quite high up the order, but um, just didn't work out for him, really. I mean, incidents like that do happen, of course. So we've got two more races to come yet tonight, and Alex shall have the reverse grid wheel, which will determine the grid for race three of the night. Any second now, I believe, if you're there, Alex? Hello, yeah, we have. Awesome. Ready to go and spin. So started off four minus two from the last one. Pretty reasonable spin. It might land exactly where it started. Oh, I don't think it's going to make much difference. It's landed on 50th, which, um, yeah, well, <laughs> not going to get that. <laughs> well, we had um, 27 cars, one lap down or less, and it makes for a very, very interesting top three, actually. Luke Cooper will be on pole position, so that's what he gets for keeping the car going around the track, and we did see him on the grass in that one, so that's paid off for him. And his teammate Alex Cherney is alongside him on the front row. He also got taken out in an incident in the end and carried it on. Adam McNally is going to be third. He also suffered the same fate. So those guys have really had an extra life thrown to him tonight. Alan McCain and Anthony Ainsworth will be fourth and fifth. So if you join me, Tom and Alex, on the iRacing Esports Network in about 10, 15 minutes' time, we're going to have a fantastic race three or four tonight. Don't go away.
Welcome back to the iRacing Esports Network and Road Atlanta for the third of four races tonight. We've got the usual uh, sprint through the grid to go with you, so if you bear with us, we've got Luke Cooper, Alex Cherney, Adam McNally, Alan McCain, Anthony Ainsworth, Cesare Rizzo, Taylor Lane, Dave Christie, Law, Murray, Ashley Beard, Dave Hampson, David Ayres, Tyler Lugo, Vickery, Steve Hefford, Craig Jones, Craig Evans, Mick Barry, Nick McCarron, Mikey Key, Jack Ashton, Peter Van Gogh, Jason Cooper, Roy Viverke, Marcelo, Panyan, Ryan Walker, Jamie Ayres, James Wink Ritchie, Ryan Holmes, Jerome Owens, and Craig Williams, Joe McDonald, Billy Rose, uh, Rob Graham, Scott Malcolm, Benjamin Mears, Max Wright, Kip Stevens, Carl Jekyll, Carl Hardy, Dries, Nice, and Jack McIntyre is at the back of the grid, which is a bit strange, actually, don't you think, Tom? That's the fastest, honestly. <laughs> that was like an SR-71 Blackbird on takeoff. But here we go, then. <laughs> five, was... five lights. The lights are beginning to come on, and away they go. Good start there from Luke Cooper. Alex Cherney is up alongside him. I think that was McCain actually, Alan McCain didn't get the best of starts, did he Chaz? You got Taylor Lane thrown in there as well, into the mix, throwing a bit of spice with it. The two Swift Cooper Esports guys lead the way with Adam McNally and the Excite Energy Esports car behind them as well. And they all seem to have got through here rather cleanly, here's hoping anyway. It's just a great shot there as they all come two wheels over the, over the kink and down the hill they go for the first time. And uh, Chaz, it looks like we've got a little bit of a group forming now. Yeah, these guys are going to have a great scrap for the front. Cesare Rizzo had a really good start, actually, and he's managed to make his way up with these guys. Anthony Ainsworth leading the AM category at the moment, not too far behind. There's about a second back from Alan McCain. Taylor Lane as well is in that. He's chasing down his uh, AM rival. Bit of a slide there from McNally into the right-hander. Luke Cooper, he's going to really want to make the most of this because he had a bit of a torrid race, too. We could see him off the track to the side. But we saw... Oh, contact behind. We can hear a lot of it. Sounds like somebody's around. Not sure whether they just checked up or anything and just sort of bumped into each other, but there's a good bit of bumping and barging. Benjamin Mears has lost a couple of places there going off the track. Joe McDonald, Jack McIntyre also off the track. Oh, there's a big, actually there's a big shuffle at the back. Jack McIntyre's gone flying down the order, sorry. I know it's not on screen, but look at McNally down the inside of the two Cooper uh, Esports cars there. He's going to make it. Or is he? Nearly he gets squeezed out. He takes a tight line. Luke Cooper keeps the lead. And Cherney and McNally, well, the... Uh, both experienced with each other enough, Tom. Look at that sky, that's beautiful. <laughs> the um, experience enough with each other, though, to uh, to fight another day after such close racing. Yeah, they do. And it's um, it's great to see them allowed to race this close. And when they're together, it's like when you get a Vettel and Hamilton situation. Oh, no. Oh, Luke Cooper's off. And he's gone far too wide there. And can he hold it? Can he hold it? He's nearly in it, soaring at the wheel there. And he manages to make it stick. Unfortunate for him, he's not dropped too far down the lead, I don't think. Um, he's down to, is that 22nd now? So, well, uh, this really has cost him that. And then again, that puts Adam McNally, Excite Energy Sports, into the lead. Cesare Rizzo behind him in P2. And we said this, Chaz, at the start, that it was all going to come down to tactics. But the lead is changing this way and that way, as we see Cesare Rizzo now up the inside of Adam McNally. Going into the tight section here, which is looks an easy section, but it really isn't. Number 47 of Cesare Rizzo does get the move done. He squeezes Adam McNally out wide. And it looks like Adam McNally is just retaining the lead at the moment, Chaz. Yeah, I think um, I think it was Jason Cooper that was in 22nd, mate. <laughs> Although, now, actually, now you say that, though, Luke Cooper is now actually 21st because he was 6th or 7th for a minute, and now he's gone further down the order as well. Oh, there you go, you see. <laughs> Preempting what's going on here. Adam McNally's yeah. in the lead then. Go on, then who's going to come out this chicane in the lead? <laughs> um, I reckon Cherney's going to get it. Maybe. Hopefully. Nah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. The, the crystal ball has crumbled. Cesare Rizzo a bit sideways over the chicane. Then McNally leads away for Excite Energy Esports. Once again, one of their cars near the lead of the pack. This is going really well for them tonight. Great to see it. Attacking the final corner. It's so difficult to do in the MX-5. It's easy to bounce it wide. But once again, we've got great scrapping all the way up and down. I've been looking at the time and screens. It's just lit up red. We get everything shown to us in like a yellowy colour or a red colour, depending on how close the cars are together. There's one or two that are about a second apart, but these guys, these are all just lit up red on our screens. Oh, big contact. It sounds like Lugo Vickery's around. Oh, that's a big hit into the wall. It just looks like he's gone straight on. He did disappear for a second there, I think, actually. I'm not sure whether he had a hardware issue at his side. Oh, he's got Marcelo Panion behind him. Marcelo on the right. Oh, Marcelo disappears, and yeah, oh, that's that's a shame. That's oh, that's really not Tyler's fault. All that. Marcelo seems to just disappear and then reappear in front of him and hit him off. So 
it's got to be gutted about that I'm pretty sure Anthony Ainsworth going down the order that leaves Taylor Lane to lead the AM category in fifth place overall as we see McNally still in the lead well, Taylor Lane doing the job then David Ayres is the second now but he's down in 11th place so Taylor's in a battle with some of the pro guys here Tom but it comes back to uh, to the mentality of the drivers do you let these pro guys get away with it just to keep it safe in the AM category yeah, I think that would be the aim of the game, wasn't it? Obviously, you can have a, a fight with people, um, but do you, at the end of the day, do you want to ruin your AM race win, or do you want to do you want to be further up the grid? And that, that's a risk that you have to take, especially when you've got. I mean, it's not really multi-class racing, but then again, it, it is because you've got Pro and AM out out on the circuit, even though they're in the same cars. So, um, if I was Taylor, I'd probably probably let the majority of them go. Then you don't want to fall into the trap that you're going to have David Ayres right right up behind you and you're having to defend from him for the am race win so uh, yeah i think taylor's now down in p7 hefford and evans have got him got him past and so is Ash, uh, so is beard as well now um but yeah i think he's following our initial tactic of just letting these guys go and then um, just fighting his way through as he moves up to p7 actually on the timing screen <laughs> yeah, stop, stop letting him go i'm gonna go back past him yeah um hampson and van gul showing it off the track there you see the little red flashes oh well that's what's happened in the background um that looked like ryan walker actually was it yeah it was ryan walker's gone down the order jason cooper jamie air side by side through the s's you don't want to hit the curb and bounce into your rivals Oh, that's really close. Oh, and there's the contact. Jason Cooper off into the wall. Luke Cooper gets redemption on Jamie Ayres, turns him around. He says, you're not taking your teammate out, getting away with it, son. But I don't think that was intentional, to be honest, but real shame there. And that looked like one of the uh, automatic cars going a bit slow on the exit as well. As Joe McDonald gets past Jason Cooper, there's Jack Ashton as well. A real shame there. It didn't have to end up in, uh, in contact, but sometimes it does. You can see at the bottom of the screen there, of course, on the YouTube channel. Make sure you do subscribe and follow the iRacing Esports Network and click the little bell icon so you get notified of videos coming up in future. And, of course, we do work on behalf of Apex Racing TV as well. We do have a uh, Facebook page that we do do streams on as well in the week. And we're also now on Twitch and, uh, of course, YouTube as well. So don't forget to look for us on there. And we do obviously appreciate being on the iRacing Esports Network. It's a pleasure to broadcast for you guys. This is uh, well, possibly my favourite night of the week. Everyone loves a Friday night, but got to love a Tuesday night with these MX-5s and, uh, and working with these guys. So we can see Journey now going to the lead with McNally. This is a great battle so far. Holmes and Evans have both gone red on the timing tower. Evans going down the order. Must have been an incident. Oh, Taylor Lane's going down the order as well. Don't reverse there, Craigie boy. Oh, is that Taylor Lane in the background? I think it might be. Yeah, he's going down the order there. Let's have a look what happens. Oh, no, they're going to be involved in the same incident here, aren't they, Tom? Let's see what happens. Yeah, I think Taylor's, Taylor's moving back, and he did get a bit, and there were just three wide through there. It's just too much. It took Taylor Lane out, but I'm not sure where he broke the... Oh, oh he tried to come back on the track and just nosed it into the barrier, and that was the end of that. That was a bit of uh, IMSA 1987, wasn't it, Chaz, if you know what I'm referring to? <laughs> and they walked away, Volume 1, for anyone oh. who's seen it. So, uh, yeah, unfortunate for him, it's Taylor Lane, he was having such a good run there. Oh, uh, McNally. Now we've got, and McNally's off as well, on the inside. They're all falling off at the moment, Chaz, but at the moment, then we've got uh, Mr. Ayres, David Ayres. He's leading the AM race ahead of James McRitchie, who is your race two winner, so that could be a fierce battle to keep our eye on. Yeah, really good comeback by James McRitchie. He's actually gained 13 places in this one. Craig Williams got 15. Rob Graham, 15 places. Carl Hardy, 20. Kip Stevens, 17. Max Ryan. Look at these guys constantly swapping places on the timing tower then for me. Flickering around side by side for the AM lead. Great to see two AMs get the chance to battle amongst these pros as well. Really close on the brakes. McRitchie down the inside. And here's that XI Energy B swarm again, Tom. They just don't go away. Adam McNally's just... That car won't die. Just Adam McNally just... <laughs> It just won't die, he just keeps pushing it on. And he's going to try and get every result he can, but fair play to the lad, he's a Geordie, he doesn't give up, does he? No, he doesn't, and he's always uh, always hyped up in spirits on the interviews as well. He's a great man, is Adam. Um, as you see, oh, I'm not sure who that is. Is, <laughs> is that him out? <laughs> Yeah, actually, bid out on the outside. I'll let you do the uh, let you do the spot in there, Chaz. Um, <laughs> on the outside, onto the grass. But no, Adam McNally, a great guy, always on interviews as well, and a really good racer. Um, he seems to have uh, my old Passat actually. It just won't actually die out <laughs> out, out on track at the okay. moment. But he's um, no, he's having a really good run, isn't he? And it's nice to see you've got the oh, Rizzo. the normal names, Rizzo. Um, is he falling back? Is he? Yeah, he, he was off then as they came out of the left hander. 
looked like he just got going again. I don't know whether he spun it out of the left-hander. But he, uh, yeah, he was getting going again. There doesn't seem to be any number boards on that car for some reason. It seems to just be a circle. There's, no, there's none of the white circles on it, which is a bit weird. But, yeah, he seemed to have an issue there. Um, not quite sure what he managed, but he's still in the top six, though, so he's going to be happy with that either way. But could have been on for a podium, which uh, would be a bit of a disappointment for him. Alex Cheney and McCain still at the front, but they've got big gaps between them now. And they've got big gaps over these guys as well, so they're quite safe. But this gaggle really, really is livening up now. Steve Heffer trying to get past Van Gaul down the inside of Rizzo. And once again, we've got Marcelo Pagni as well. Great stuff by him. He's gained 19 places, but I'll tell you what, guy to look at if you're looking at positions gained. Dries nice, ninth place. He's gained 31 positions in this race so far. What a drive that is. Yeah, that's unbelievable driving from him. Um, I, I wish you hadn't said it because that's what we caused the commentator's curse on Brian yeah. Holmes in race two. But on board with Cesare Rizzo now, and uh, he's down in P7, fighting with Van Gaal, Panyon, Hefford, all the usual names up at the front. Alex Cherney is still leading, and it just goes to show, Chaz, it's a really narrow circuit, which is why I think a lot of the guys, when they've been going and sticking these little MX-5s three wide into a 120 mile plus mile an hour corner um, are ending up falling off because it's a bit like Alton Park I think I think it's, it seems to be a bit like the American Alton Park round here it's quite a narrow circuit it does widen in places but um, it really is a tricky one to master yeah, and it's very undulating as well up and down all over the place bumps here and there um, not quite as narrow but I mean yeah it's it's a very uh, direct comparison, I think, because you've got a long straight bit and then you've got a nice windy squarey bit, if, if that's the technical term. But we see McNally now on the back of uh, Luke Cooper. These guys have had a fair few battles in their time in this series. And this is another one to add to the very long list. They've got James McRitchie, who is now the AM class leader once again. Doing a fine, fine job this evening. Just looks like McNally's not got the straight line speed. Not sure whether the damage is uh, harm with the car. He's trying to go a little bit later on the brake. Shows his nose. Luke Cooper is all too ready for it. And he doesn't have to defend much. But McNally looks like he's struggling there with a bit of understeer. That front end damage must have really, really uh, upset the car. Craig Williams here and Nick McCarron a bit further down the order in the number five machine. He had a bit of an issue with his, uh, his VR head, uh, headset last week. He's not got a spare head for his VR, don't worry. Um, <laughs> his, um, his VR headset last week, so... Not sure whether he's got it going again this week, but he was on a uh, single monitor the last time round, which is something he's not been used to for a while, as Williams runs slightly wide. Luke Cooper there doing the fastest lap of the race. Or was it Jason Cooper? There you go. I've done the same thing as you, Tom. I've got them the wrong way around. It is Jason Cooper that's got the fastest lap of the race, 135.3. But you can just see just the actual climbs and the, the dips and the rises on the track. Look at it on the left there. You can just see how far they go back down the hill to go back up. From some of the TV cameras, you don't really get that impression, do you, Tom? No, you don't. Um, and I think this is why these onboards are so brilliant, because you get to see the whole track. Um, the way from the driver's eye perspective, obviously, they're coming up now on board with Nick McCarron in the Simlab racing car. And uh, he's hunting down, at the moment, Craig Williams, who's, um, after his incident in race two, Chas, seems to be having quite a nice drive here. He's in the P19 and up 11 places at the moment, chasing down the likes of Rob Graham and Carl Hardy. So, uh, yeah, well, I think we've had quite a few nice battles in race two, haven't we, chaps? Quite, a, quite an interesting one. We've had a few incidents um, that we... I, I, I don't think you'd be a race fan if you didn't like the odd incident. Um, but, yeah, we've just Ooh. seen... Oh, <laughs> really, really close there. On the back of Dries Nice was Ashley Beard. He had to go really hard on the brakes, and I think that's upset him, Chaz, through the chicane. and has forced him to go out wide coming out of it. I think... Uh Formula One fans among us were having flashback to Baku then, <laughs> thinking that was Verstappen <laughs> and Ricardo, but they managed to keep it on track together, which is good. Van Gaal fifth then, this is a great scrap between these guys now. McCain is at the front of this with Hefford, Panyon, Van Gaal, Hampson, Rizzo, nice beard Holmes. That's a hell of a train to have behind you when you're Alan McCain. He's not had uh, the longest of times in this championship, but he's proved himself, he's done really well. I think Steve Hefford's going to teach him a bit of a lesson here if he's uh, got the chance. Down the S's they go then. Really, really closing up now. One more lap to go after this for McCain. Hoping that he uh, keeps it together after I wrongly accused him of being part of the Tucker Race Driver games. Look at the battle behind, though. They're all just queuing up to have a go, aren't they, really? Great stuff from Dave Hampson. Really, really impressive is, uh, is Dave. I've been really, really uh, a fan of him since he came into it. Started out in the AM category, and he very quickly got put in pros when they realised just how quick this boy is. 
just trying to slipstream each other through the straight. There's that beehive again and consistent of the exit energy. There's another one as well, not too far behind. <laughs> just brilliant to see. And Panyan, I tell you what, he's been my star of the evening so far. Really, really great stuff from him, and he's not letting off one bit. Look at him go. Yeah, he's having a he's having a fantastic drive, isn't he? I mean, race one, he, he came around and won it. Um, race two, he was up in the mix, and then race three, he's he, well, he's there thereabouts, isn't he? I mean, he's he's on, could be on for a podium here, Chaz. I mean, this is the start of the last lap. Oh, no. um, but well, he's up into third now as they're going three wide and you don't want to be doing that boys going through there um, but we've got the likes of Steve Hefford in there as well Pete Van Gaal is I think really think Chaz that this podium's going to be anyone's guess and it's this gaggle of cars going up the hill now for the final time and the kink is the one bit I want to see because it's where a lot of people fall off in these fights and we see that Panyan does make it stick doesn't he he's got Van Gaal right up behind him and he's had to swap places with him again and to be honest with you Jazz, I think this this uh, last place on this podium is anyone's what? guess at the moment <laughs> it would be anyone's guess if Panyan didn't cut across the front of Van Gaal like that and give him about six inches of the rear bumper to the front but oh well Dave Hampson's got a really good run out of that left hander actually those guys were pushing so hard they've gone on the kerb it looks like Dave's just going to have to play it safe here Steve Hefford's made a little bit of a breakaway Alan McCain looks quite safe for a podium but the slipstream is going to be the big change in all this. Now, look at the commitment through there. Panyan going for it over the kerb. Two wheels, and now he's going to just keep his foot planted, get after him. Look at how much those Excite cars have gained onto the back of this as well. This is going to be a great last few corners for us. Alex Journey way out in front, eight seconds ahead of Steve Hefford. Dries Nice, the star of the show here, though. 32 places gained tonight. Great drive. Carl Hardy in the AM category as well. He's gained 22 places to get to third, but... Here is the guy that's bound to take the third win of the evening. Great performance by Alex Journey for Swift Cooper Esports. Takes the win in race three tonight, the BSR MX5 Winter Series. Fantastic drive. Steve Hefford is surely going to come home in second place. Alan McCain is going to get third, but it's the battle for fourth. Panyan and Van Gaal side by side. Looks like Panyan's got it down the inside. He does. He's followed by Hampson Rizzo. Nice beard, Holmes. And Holmes doesn't have a beard. And I don't know if it's nice or not, but there you go. Um, Jamie Ayres, <laughs> I don't know where that came from, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I ended up shouting, nice beard, Holmes. So, there we go. You can see the rest of them streaming across the line. It just shows you, that. look how many small battles there are, how close these guys are all the way through. Great to watch. And if you are, of course, interested in getting involved in this league, you can get involved in the Monday nights that these guys do as well for the AM category. It's, uh, it's well, it's on Monday nights, I suppose. It's uh, all welcome, really. They do enjoy anyone trying to be part of it. And, of course, if you do want to sort of not graduate as such, they don't do it on that sort of basis. But if you if you enjoy it and you sort of uh, keep coming back and show that you're a good racer amongst these guys and obviously not too much of an issue for the league, I suppose, because you know what some people are like, they will, uh, they will obviously put you into the Tuesday nights. And this is when the main event is, essentially. The, uh, the Monday nights is more just for the AM categories. And we do see some good racing in that as well, Tom, to be fair. It's nice to get the, uh, the time to shine for those boys. But this is where all the nitty gritty happens with the uh, the two different categories together. Yeah, it is. Uh, Monday nights are always interesting. But then again, you come on to Tuesday, you get me, Chaz and Alex in the commentary booth having the time of our lives. And then you get um, you get some really fantastic racing. So uh, good, good drive from Alex Journey there. Uh, well deserved he pulled out one hell of a lead 8.6 seconds at the end at the end of that race ahead of Steve Hefford Alan McCain um, so yeah I think they'll uh, I think reverse grid for race 4 is going to be an interesting one because if you look at the midfield you've got some really fast guys in there um, so yeah I think uh, we've had a great night's racing tonight boys and I'm really looking forward to race 4 yeah it just continues here on the iRacing Esports Network still one more race to come tonight and I'm looking forward to it, so I hope you are as well. And there are your results on screen, Tom, if you would like to do us the honours, mate. Yeah, so Alex Cherney takes the win there for Swift Cooper Esports, uh, ahead of Steve Hefford for Simulab Racing, and Alan McCain runs out the podium. Uh, Marcello Panyan in fourth, and Pete Bangal behind him in fifth. Dave Hansen was sixth, Cesare Rizzo in seventh, and Dries Nice in eighth. She, uh, I think it's Alex Jenny doing some nice burnouts beneath us there. Uh, Ashley Beard in ninth, Brian Holmes in tenth, eleventh uh, was James McRitchie, uh, Adam McNally in twelfth, Luke Cooper was thirteenth, and uh, his teammate uh, in fourteenth, Jason Cooper. Jamie Ayres in fifteenth, so will be looking to come back from that in race four. David Ayres in sixteenth, Carl Hardy in seventeenth, and eighteenth was Rob Graham. Uh, 19th place, we had uh, Jack McIntyre. 
Kip Stevens in 20th, Craig Williams in 21st, Scott Malcolm in 22nd, Ryan Walker 23rd, who we're looking to come back as well. Uh, Craig Jones in 24th, Benjamin Mews 25th, Roy Viverke in 26th, Anthony Ainsworth 27th with Nick McCarron in 28th, Lorne Murray in 29th and his teammate for Automate Mock Hill in 30th with Max Wright, your own Ursum in 30 in 31st, sorry, um, 32nd, sorry, <laughs> Joe McDonald in 32nd and then your non-finishers is Billy Rose, Jack Ashton, Craig Evans, Taylor Lane for Beast Racing, uh, 37th. It was one of your non-finishers was Mikey Key, Michael Barry, Tyler Lugo Vickery, Carl Jacolet and Dave Christie rounds out your grid. Thank you very much, Tom. And another great race under our belts for the evening. And we've got one more to come yet. And that means that it is once again time for Alex to get out the wonderful spinny wheel for the reverse grid. Alex, if you are there. Of course you are, but... We... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. I'm really not sure what that noise was. I do apologise. <laughs> Right, what's it going to be? We've had two pretty sizable ones so far, so I think the guys are uh, desperate for a small one. Well, your own Urson wants a full one here, because him and uh, Joe McDonald are the last two a lap down, and they are teammates, so that'd be a great front row for them. I swear I didn't really get it. Oh, it's not going to stay anyway. Oh, that's four minus four. It was so oh. close to 15. <laughs> And that puts uh, SimLab driver Nick McCarron on the front row with Anthony Ainsworth. Second, it is Automat Knock Hill cars of Roy Viverke and Benjamin Mears. They'll be looking for good results in the AM category. And Craig Jones will be fifth on the grid for result clothing. So if you join me, Tom and Alex again in about 10, 15 minutes time on the iRacing Esports Network, we'll bring you the fourth and final race of the evening. It's bound to be an absolute belter. Don't go away.
Chaz Grid, go. Nick McCarron, Anthony Ainsworth, Roy Verke, Benjamin Mears, Craig Jones, Ryan Walker, Scott Malcolm, Craig Williams, Kip Stevens, Jack McIntyre, Rob Graham, Carl Hardy, Dave Ayres, Jamie Ayres, Jason Cooper, Luke Cooper, Adam, McCalli, Adam McNally, damn it, James Ritchie, Adam Beard, Ashley Beard, Dries Nice, Cesare Rizzo, Dave Hampson, Pete Van Gogh, Marcelo Panion, Alan McCain, Steve Hefford, Alex Jenny, Lorne Murray, Max Wright, Euron Erson, Joe McDonald, Billy Rose, Jack Ashton, Craig Evans, Sadal Lane, Mikey Keith McBarry, Tyler Luger, Vickery, Carl Jacklett, Dave Christie, Lewis Morga. And welcome back to the iRacing Esports Network. For the fourth and final round tonight of the BSR RX5 Winter Series, Chaz Draycott, Tom Jacobs and Alex Simpson with you here. And they're away for the fourth time tonight, under lights for this last race. And what a great start for pretty much everyone. Oh, Scott Malcolm's gone a little bit backwards there. Fantastic sky in the background, wonderful shadows off the cars. And, well, we're hoping for more action, just like what we've seen in the first three races tonight. And under lights, Tom. It's actually a very picturesque circuit. This looks wonderful. I wasn't expecting it to look this good. No, it looks lovely, doesn't it? As the cars just cascade now down from the S's back down the hill. And the headlights look brilliant. The sky looks absolutely, well, gorgeous to be in all honest. Oh, we've got one of the result clothing cars round. And that looks like oh, another one. Craig Jones. And another one as well. So they'll be really, really disappointed with that. Unfortunate for them, but... Friend, that's where it goes. Oh, the inside cars going, and it looks like there's that Jason Cooper as well. I can't even tell because our timing screens are going absolutely mad. As everyone, oh, there's oh, more yeah, yeah, cars yeah. upside down, and that's that's not what we wanted. Spa 98, anyone? Throw the oh. safety car. Oh, there's another one. Throw oh. the safety car. Stop them. Yeah, that's a real shame that we didn't want to see it. It was actually a very good dodge by one of them in there, but if I could try and pick out who it was and where, it'd be an absolute nightmare. But here we go then back to the front of the field. No safety car, unfortunately. But Nick McCarron's leading the way. He was an admin in the series, so I'm pretty sure that uh, <laughs> he'd be quite happy with that. Uh, Viverke, second place, though. Really good stuff by him. Uh, Jack McIntyre's third. Anthony Ains with fourth. Ben Mears having a bit of a scrap there with Ryan Walker for fifth and sixth. So we've currently got Pro-Am, 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 Pro-Am. Oh, and it's three pros. And, oh, it's just changed now. Ayers and Malcolm swap places. But, yeah, this looks really good under lights. And once again, the little MX-5 is providing a lot of action straight off the start. Chaotic accident. Real shame, though, because it just didn't need to happen. Really didn't need to happen. Car's running wide on the exit. It's Anthony Ainsworth there. But we've once again, Tom, got a good spread between the AM drivers here, actually. And they've been uh, the focus of my attention, at least, for the evening, just making sure that... They've, they've sort of had decent scraps for the lead, but then they've always had a sort of a bit of safe space behind them as Van Gogh seems to have been going down the order. I'm not quite sure what's happened to him. I think he might have gone off at the, uh, the kink at the top. It's Kip Stevens taking that MX5 for a wild ride there around the left hand. That was mental. <laughs> he just completely jumped the kerb almost. Yeah, I think um, I think it's, we're going to get a decent spread of drivers, uh, which we seem to have got already. Uh, the pro guys will be fighting their way through the field. You've got the uh, likes of Hefford and Rose down in 19th and 20th, respectively. Then you've got a couple of AM drivers in there as well. Scott Malcolm, um, Anthony Ainsworth, Benjamin Muse and Roy Viverke currently leading the AM race in P3. So, yeah, I think um, it's going to provide some interesting racing. We saw it a bit in race two as well, as it looks like Jack McIntyre has taken the lead off of Nick McCarron just by use of the slipstream. And Nick McCarron, I think, is going to be a bit too far back to get it back on the brakes now. So, uh, yeah, I think it, it gives the AM guys a lot of experience, doesn't it? Racing in, in high traffic situations uh, with faster drivers coming through and then having to take your battles. So, um, yeah, and that can translate into other series as well, such as ILMS and DGFX and things like that. So, yeah, it's good for them. And it also provides us with the commentary box some brilliant racing. Now, nothing against Nick McCarran, but I'd really enjoyed seeing Jack McIntyre win this race, actually, because it just means that we get his usual uh, procession of uh, drifting at the end of it. But... Good for the team to be in a 1-2 position at the moment. Ryan Walker going past Roy Viverke there. Viverke doing the sensible thing, not fighting it too much. And he's got his teammate Benjamin Mears behind him as well, actually. So they're in a 1-2 position in the AM category as well. So we're uh, just showing that the teams can work well together here, Tom, and get some decent results as a pairing. As we see McNally and Rob Graham. Look at them filtering down the S's. That looks great. But there's a big, big gap back from the likes of Steve Hefford. They're actually five seconds back to Billy Rose, who's 20th cars we've lost in that first lap seem to be Jack Ashton Tyler Lugo Vickery Dave Christie Dries Nice uh, Lorne Murray Carl Hardy Cesare Rizzo Joe McDonald Carl Jackalette 
not sure whether we lost Craig Evans. He seems to be... Oh, there's a bit of contact going on there. Headlights are blazed down the straight, but there's that big gap you can see there. From Hefford back to Billy Rose. As we look at McRitchie and Graham now side by side down the straight. Not so much slipstreaming coming into effect here, Tom. They're not really close enough to be, uh, to be battling with the guys in front. But they're going to at least try and outbreak each other, as, uh, as you really have to go for it every time. Luke Cooper's got a great run, actually, so he might go for it here. Yeah, it's going to be oh, more than... No. Oh, and he gets turned. That's Rich oh. Rob Graham, sorry. And he accidentally backs out into traffic as well. I don't think there was much he could have done there. And uh, you come and take cursed. <laughs> Again, <laughs> Chaz, just staying late on the brakes and round people go. Um, but yeah, I think sometimes when the slipstream's not working, it really is brakes that you have to turn to to uh, try and get it done in this car. But obviously, you don't want too much of it. As, we've, as uh, Chaz, Alex and I have said in the past, it really is a... Um, it's a momentum car this um, if you you know you haven't really got the grunt out of corners to make it stick as we see that Scott Malcolm is that going very wide snaking as he goes to over the kink there to try and not uh, to try and avoid one of the uh, Swift Cooper eSports cars there in 14th that's Luke Cooper in the number six um, but we've got some nice fierce battles starting to form out on track at the moment um, Richie's having a ha Richie's having a brilliant time actually at the moment, isn't he, Chaz? He's had a really good evening. He's up eight places, and uh, he's got Marcelo Panyan in front of him. He's up 15 places as well. Um, but I've got to say it. I think Panyan's probably your driver of the day, and I think Richie's got to be mine, Chaz, because he's in an AM, he's an AM driver, but he's just always been there thereabouts and really sticking it to the progress progress this evening. Yeah, certainly has. He's just been absolutely on it, and he's been proving that the uh, the designation of your category isn't really anything to go off. Essentially, really, really good battling by him. As we see the two teammates, there. you can see the wonderful bloom on the dashboard of the MX-5 as it glows. The one of the uh, many little effects that iRacing are sort of investing more and more in to make sure that they uh, they look good. And yeah. Um, Mac Johnson and Joe McDonald just confirming that I really need to stop speaking about specific people and saying they're doing well because I'm <laughs> killing a lot of drivers out there tonight I think so uh, yeah I'm just going to have to say people are just doing badly we're just going to have to comment on people that are having a bit of a torrid time but Jamie Ayres then goes up the inside of the Verkate to go up to fifth place of course that wasn't very good at all so he's not going to go off but yeah nice um, it seems a bit more tame now I think the uh, the accident's probably uh, taken out most of the guys that could have been involved in incidents further down the line, Tom. It's, it's a shame to see it, but it's actually um, sort of nullified some of the racing in the mid pack. Because look at the big gap that's further back there. Yeah, I think I think that's generally what's happened. You've got a lot of the quick, a lot of the quick guys are still in there, aren't they? Cooper, Stevens, Panyon, they're all still running. Um, we've lost about ten or eleven drivers now, um, which is which is unfortunate. Uh, but I'm afraid that's just the way that racing goes. I mean, you had uh, what was it, Monaco '96? I think it was only three cars that actually managed to finish the race. Um, so even in sim and real life, it, it can happen. Um, but yeah, it still provides exciting racing. It's just that the uh, it's everyone spread out a little bit at the moment. Um, as we look at Dave Hampson in the number in the Triple Eight car. That's uh, that is back to early 2000s touring cars, isn't it? The Astros, the Triple Eight Astros, but. Yeah, it's, when the, once the teams start to spread out and all the drivers seem to spread out away from each other, then people think, oh, it gets got a bit tame. Um, but I don't know. I think we can still get some decent racing out of this one as they come down towards the uh, down towards the last chicane now. Heffer's looking pretty racy going up in there. He goes late on the brakes, try and stick it on the inside. What a move that was on Anthony Ainsworth. Is he going to get it done around the outside? I think he might. Um, he's still there, thereabouts with him. And uh, as they come down to, through the last corner, Ainsworth shuts the door on Heffern. It doesn't quite let him get there, but I think they're almost touching coming across the line there, Chaz. Yeah, very, very close racing from these guys, and they're just showing just how close you can get. And when these guys have been racing with each other, so, oh, does it sound like they were contact? I think Anthony Ainsworth nearly made contact with the result car there. But, yeah, when they've been racing as closely as these guys have for as long as they have in such a, uh, such a really well-contested league, it really does show from, uh, from every single meeting that we do. You do get a, a, a theme of these guys being really close on track. As Ryan Walker is now into second place ahead of Nick McCarran. Four places gained for him. Jamie Ayres and Jason Cooper, ten places gained apiece. For Swim, uh, Simlab and Swift Cooper Esports. Not Swimlab. That would be a completely different uh, genre of sport. <laughs> They're fourth and fifth now. Roy Verke still sixth, though, doing really well in the AM category. His teammate is still second in there as well. James McRitchie. It's going to be another AM podium, at least for him tonight. That's going to be... Uh, 
surely one of his best meetings. He's been doing well very previously. Lewis Morgan seems to be dropping down the order slightly. He's still showing us off track to me on the timing screen. Shame to see it. But well, interesting to see as it's gradually getting darker and darker here, Tom. There's no track lighting, so these guys are really going to have to start remembering their breaking points and get the muscle memory on the go as to uh, when they're going to get things done around here because it's about to get very, very dark indeed. Yeah, it will do, and I think that brings a whole new element to the track as well. It will start to cool down, which will give you a little bit more grip. Uh, that just seems to be the way that iRacing works. The colder it is, to a certain extent, you get more grip and then it does start to drop off if it does get too cold but I think the main thing here is, is your vision knowing where your braking points are and also you're going to have big headlights behind you as well which can be quite uh, quite intimidating compared to just seeing a normal car um, without a massive beam of light going through it as well um, but yeah I, it, it does change up the track completely um, we've noticed this since the day night cycle came into iRacing um, how much of a difference it does make we saw it especially in the Daytona 24 at the weekend um, I mean what a difference that was we were there was lap times that were almost a second um, difference between what we were doing during the day and when it was hot and obviously when we were double stinting tyres and things like that and then when the heat starts to come back in during the day and you can't double stint tyres anymore because it, it you know it's more wear on them so um, it's definitely a different element uh, which is really really good actually and it brings a lot more realism into the sim and I know that these guys now will be uh, probably having the time of their lives and be fully immersed um, in, in the uh, in the MX5 Cup as we've got here as uh, Ryan Walker does he go for the move on Jack McIntyre he doesn't so Chaz I think he's uh, I think he's bringing tactics into play here and we'll probably go for the move on the last lap yeah, definitely. He's going to just try and stick with him, keep his pace, and uh, go for it on the last lap, like you say. Get the slipstream and go with it from there. He's just got to be cautious of Nick McCarron behind, but he seems to have lost him a little bit. But Ryan's been doing really well tonight. His pace has been very decent. He had a bit of a poor start in race one, which dropped him down the order. I think it hindered him a little bit going forward. But as I was saying uh, a few weeks ago at Monza, when he's put the practice time in in the week and really clicked with the car, he does a great, great job for Exciting Energy Sports. He's no slouch in this thing just behind him you can see Ayres and Cooper as well so they're not going to be hanging back as Ayres is on the grass there I'm not sure whether we would have got a slowdown for that might not have done they've got traffic in front of them that's one of the Excite cars I think that's Jack Ashton it is showing him as 1 minute 32 down and it's about a 1 minute 36 lap so yeah it's down to be it's bound to be him this scrap though two laps to go after this one Tom this could go anyone's way bit of slipstream bit of luck here and there could really help him out as a look down the order though Roy Viverke has lost a couple of places and he still is doing he's lost the AM lead now as Alex as quick as a flash gets us back to it let's see what happens oh he's lost it going in hasn't he well saved oh no that's not where you want to be is it no <laughs> that is absolutely not where you want to be <laughs> he did what anyone else would do get his out of the way yeah I think I um yeah, run away, run away fast, <laughs> that one. I wouldn't want to be sat out there to see now. Adam McNally coming under pressure from Panyan, isn't he? And Panyan's going to have a little look up the inside. Is he going to get the move done? He goes late on the brakes, and McNally has to yield to stop a collision from them. But Panyan, Chaz, has got to be said, he has been on fire this evening. Um, just he, oh, in all four races, he's just been... I mean, he, run, he won race one, didn't he? And then he just went on and has just been there, thereabouts ever since. So I think I'd be nice to see him more in the series um, going forward. Yeah, definitely. I don't think you'll be seeing the uh, hashtag Panion for Am anytime soon. He's absolutely on fire, like you say. Adam McNally right behind him now, then. He's got the Am Championship battle uh, of Mias and McRitchie there. Wonderful shot from the onboard there. You can see how the car is lit up by the guys behind. The wonderful blue of the Excite Energy Esports car. You can see the branded uh, helmet of Adam McNally there as well. Really close to uh, Panyan though. Doing a great job of sticking with him. And the 478 machine. McRitchie has overtaken me. It's just behind this battle as well. So once again, McRitchie goes to the head of the AM category. Now that is a hashtag you may see. Is McRitchie for pro? Because it wouldn't be surprising, to be fair, if uh, we get to next week and he's got a little blue strip next to his name because he has really, really outclassed the rest of the field tonight. But Ben Mears has been there, been there or thereabouts all the time. He's always quick. One of the best and most consistent arms out there. Ayers has taken Walker for second place. And Cooper has got past Walker as well now. 
Jason Cooper down the inside. He's been so late on the brakes there all night. Gets it done. Beautiful stuff. Ayres tries to get the cutback. It seems to work for him as well. Jason Cooper's on the grass. Gets a poor run. Ayres is passed. Can Walker do the same? Coming on to the final lap, Tom. One more time. Walker into third. And it looks like McIntyre might be safe here. What do you reckon? Yeah, I don't think it doesn't make any silly mistakes. I think it'll be his, but these guys are so fast. Um, McIntyre might have to work for it if they do end up catching him. But we know that McIntyre's quick himself. I think there was a bit of contact there between Walker and Ayres. They come towards the kink. Ayres is looking really racy and really hungry for this second place on the podium now. And uh, Walker's having to fight at the moment, isn't he? He's really... He's got all these cars in his mirrors and trying to keep them at bay is going to be an issue. And I think, Chaz, this one's going to be decided when we get to the final straight. Yeah, definitely. I think McIntyre's going to be too far ahead for these guys now. They've got two and a half seconds over them because they're battling. Just not going to make it, it seems. Jamie Ayers tries to go back into second place. Does so. You have to watch uh, Nick McCarran here, though. He's in fifth and he's going to get the strongest slip stream out of all. This has got four cars, sorry, three cars, punching the air in front of him punching a hole in the air in front of him. You can see the wonderful shadows working the way there. It's great how it all works now. It's so dynamic. Iris have done a great job of it. The headlights look so natural on track as well. It looks it's like McCarran's not actually close enough to get this done. Jason Cooper's going to be my shout for this. Walker goes to the left of it. As Jason Cooper's in the middle. That's brave. He's braver than me. And pretty much braver than everyone here so far. Ayres is now behind. Jason Cooper take a bow son down the inside up to second place but can one of these guys get a run back look at what Jamie Ayres was doing there as there's his teammate Jack McIntyre is about to take the fourth and final victory of the night and we're going to see some fantastic drifting in a moment I hope and it's going to be oh it's just Cooper ahead of Ayres and then Walker fantastic battle by those boys to the end great to see them keep it clean and here's the hand battle now then McRitchie out of the final corner takes yet another victory in the AM category tonight. Brilliant, brilliant evening for him. He's been awesome to watch. Benjamin Mears rounds out the top 10. 10th Tenth place is not a bad result at all. Roy Viverke be a bit gutted though. Finishes third though. Still an AM podium I suppose, Tom. It's uh, always something to be happy about and there's your race three winner Alex Cherney now coming back into 20th position so not the most ideal race for him in this one. No, it wasn't, was it? But um, Cherney had his race three win which would be good for him. But uh, my drive of the day has got, got to be Mr. Rick Ritchie. Um, just just on form uh, for an AM driver as well. And I think he should be going pro after this. Uh, just just great driving. He, he had a race win in there and just held his own. Just held his cool even in high traffic situations. You see the boys now <laughs> getting the rear end out to uh, celebrate a nice uh, Sin Lab racing victory. But yeah, I think, um, I don't know about you boys, but I really enjoyed this evening. And I hope, uh, hope you guys at home have enjoyed it too. Yeah, it was really good fun this one. Uh, really, really good always to get in on a Tuesday night and know that this is what uh, what lies before me. And yeah, fantastic to do. Really enjoying this. And it's great, of course, to be on the RAC and Esports Network. Don't forget, you can subscribe to their channel. As Jack McIntyre is well, okay. <laughs> Verse entry. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. You can see at the bottom of the screen. Don't forget, you can subscribe and follow the RAC and Esports Network and Apex Racing TV. Of course, we do have our own YouTube channel and do subscribe be sure to hit the little bell icon so you do get notified of future videos and we are also, uh, we are also on uh, Facebook and Twitch as well when we do uh, when we do stream so keep an eye out we'll be sure to bring you fantastic content going forward and Jack McIntyre will be hoping to bring you more victories going forward as his fight for the championship continues and for the final time tonight Tom we have the results in front of us so Jack McIntyre is your race four and final winner of the evening for Simlad Race and a great win from him. Behind him, Jason Cooper in second with Jamie Ayres in third and Ryan Walker in fourth after that fantastic fight to the finish. Nick McCarran finishes fifth and Kip Stevens in sixth with Marcello pa uh, Panion in, seven, in seventh. Sorry, Adam McNally in eighth and James McRitchie in ninth. Uh, James McRitchie takes your, uh, takes your AM race win again for the final time. Uh, 10th was Benjamin Muse, 11th Craig Williams, Ashley Beard in 12th, Roy Viverke in 13th with Steve Hefford in 14th, David Ayres in 15th with Scott Malcolm in 16th and Billy Rose in 17th, ahead of Pete Van Gaal in 18th place. Uh, 19th Alan McCain with uh, 20th is Alex Cherney, 
21st, your own Ersum, Craig Jones in 22nd, Luke Cooper in 23rd, Dave Hampson in 24th, Jack Ashton in 25th with Anthony Ainsworth in 26th. It looks to be Taylor Lane in 27th and Mikey Key in 28th. And then your non-finishers, Michael Barry, Lewis Morgan, um, Max Wright, Craig Evans, Rob Graham, Lorne Murray, Dave Christie, Carl Jacolette, uh, Cesare Rizzo, Carl Hardy, Drees Nice, Joe McDonald and Tyler Lugo Vickery. Thank you very much, Tom. Great scenes this evening. Not that we can see anything now. It's gone completely dark and now there's no cars out there. There's nothing to light it up. Um, just having a quick look in the good old interview room then. We have two of our regulars, Tom. We have Mr. McNally and a Mr. Walker. Always waiting to uh, have a chat. They are teammates, of course, so we'll bring them both in at the same time. Mr. McNally, Mr. Walker, welcome to the booth. Um, great night to watch tonight the uh, the ever-changing conditions were certainly quite interesting how did do you uh, feel like you got on overall uh, i loved it race one race, race one was great the battle with marcello and the two coopers but mr start of race two by like 10 seconds so i had a pit start and that just sort of night went downhill from there spinning race three from battling for the win but still got 11th in and the eighth in that last race so can't complain really four point finishes and Ryan, we saw you were up there quite a lot tonight as well. You were uh, fighting for some really good results. It seemed that you really had the form out there. Yeah, it was kind of uh, yeah had a had a good had a good race one, finished in eleventh. Say race two, uh, I can't remember the other results uh, just because I when I concentrate so much, I just completely forget. So yeah, uh, it was a good it was a good battle in the, the final race of the night with the Jack McIntyre. But unfortunately, I just made a couple just made a mistake going onto the back straight and just allowed the Jamie Ayers and uh, one of the Coopers I think it was to latch on and to pass me uh, on the last lap but uh, overall I'm happy with the evening and uh, a fourth a fourth place in the final race of the evening is uh, it's a, a good way to top it off yeah definitely it was uh, it was another opportunity for us to just, to just to sort of come out with the fact that when you do get the practice in and uh, you put your mind to it you are capable of really really good results out there and it's great to see because i mean for both of you obviously for the whole team um i did mention on the uh, the apex channel that the main theme of tonight for some of our commentary has been the fact that you boys are inseparable on track there's, nev <laughs> there's never just two of you anywhere there is always like three or four of you in one go you've got a hundred impact yeah you the only way to get through the field in these Indeed, you need to put that as a hashtag on your car, I think, somewhere. Because honestly, every time we see you, you're always just in the back of the shot, just four <laughs> cars, just making their way down the S's. We've got some wonderful shots on screen right now, though. Um, I was saying at the beginning of the broadcast that it was going to be quite a challenging track to get the car around, just because of how soft and sort of wobbly it is, for lack of a better phrase. Do you, do you reckon it would have been... Uh, or do you reckon it was a difficult track, or did you find it quite easy? It's just some of the exit curves. Quite easy, chuck you into a wall, and before you know it, race over. Like race three, I had to drag the car around for the last three laps with a no front right wheel. Just purely because I touched, took a bit too much of the kerb, hit the sand, and that was it. I was in the wall. Yeah, it seems like it's quite unforgiving with uh, the grass and the walls. They are in uh, in places where you are <laughs> off at high speed. So it's a shame that it ended that the way you like. But uh, obviously, we do wish you the best of luck for the next one. Um, it's that time of week again where I don't know where we are and I'm hoping that Alex has done his usual thing of being able to tell me but I'm, I won't uh, I won't be mad if you've not um, I'm as much as you <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah it's great to see the Excite boys all up there you really are fighting well for it Dries Nice had some great results as well tonight um, yeah Dries is always on when he's on pace he's absolutely rapid we saw him one of them gained 32 positions which is <laughs> mind blowing absolutely mind blowing and to be fair, I must apologise to you guys and Brian Holmes because we noticed how well he was doing. He gained 30 places. I said his name and off he went. And <laughs> oh, it's, oh, it's your fault. Then. Yeah, indeed. I'll let him yeah. go. I've been called out for that a couple of times tonight, so uh, I do apologise. I'll uh, I'll try not to, <laughs> to not to mention you guys too much next week, but oh. it's been a pleasure to speak to you both as always. Um, is there anyone you want to give a shout out to before you go? Yes, oh, the just usual. Be oh. Just before that, it's Suzuka, by the way. So if you wanted oh. to come back to that point about the uh, the track, well, there's more S's. So what do you reckon <laughs> that's going to be like, Ryan? Uh, I'm not sure. Is it the full layout of Suzuka or is it the touring car? Oh, I'm not sure actually. <laughs> no, It'd be interesting if it was the full layout, but if it's no, the short ones, they're quite good fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like Suzuka. It's always a track. I've 
I've never been quick around, but it's a track I've always enjoyed racing at. And yeah, I'm looking forward to next weekend. It should be should be interesting to, to see what it's like in the MX5. And um, yeah, quite looking forward. And what about you, Adam? Is it a track that you particularly like? Uh, it's a track I don't mind, but it's like any track with the MX5. They're all all good fun once you get into that battle. And it's, cool. yeah. it's good to watch as well. Really, really good to watch. Um, before we let you go, boys, anyone you want to give a shout out to? Uh, as usual, you lads for the commentating, everyone for sorting the league out, our main sponsor, Excite Energy, Race Mentor, Tam Steve Allen, the Prio Premature Baby Foundation, Motorsport Days Live, and Race Data Systems. Cracking stuff. Thank you very much, boys. Pleasure as always, and we wish you the best of luck for right. Suzuka. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and good job in the broadcast as always. Cheers, Ryan. Thank you very much, mate. Now, we have a, uh, another participant for an interview, Tom, if you would like to uh, bring him up for a chat. Yes, I will uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll let Sorry. you bring him up. Uh, there we go. We bring him into the booth then. Mr. Scott Malcolm, I will uh, leave you in the very capable hands of Mr. Tom Jacobs. Good evening, Scott. I um, saw you had a good run out there. Um, if you could just talk us through what happened, because you were leading, I believe it was race two, and then just had a little bit of an incident. So could you just talk us through that quickly? I knew you were going to mention that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. It felt like I got a, a wheel of the grass or something. Or I don't know. I, I never looked back. I was just uh, disgusted with myself. Um, pushing it too hard, I think. Yeah, I mean, I mean, these things just happen, don't they? But overall, I think you had quite a good evening. But h how did you find the track um, in total? Because we were talking about it up here and said it could be quite a tricky track to master. So how did you find it? It was. I thought it was quite tricky. You can see coming up the back up the hill from, from the S's. Um, if you didn't get that right, you were sneaking all over the place. Um, there's quite a few people I've seen go off there. But apart from that, uh, it's pretty good. And I like that, that chicane at the end. I always see me, you'll do pretty well with that chicane. Yeah, it's, it's it's quite an interesting circuit. I mean, we were saying in GT stuff, it could be quite difficult as well. But um, I think it's, Chaz, did you say it was Suzuka we're going to next week? It is indeed. Yeah, so are you looking forward to Suzuka, Scott? Is it a track that you enjoy? Yeah, I like that track. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get a bit more practice instead of spending all week on uh, the GTE cars for the Daytona 24 hour and all that rubbish as well so aye I'm looking forward to it looking forward to getting decent enough results quite capable of getting a top 10 I think yeah I, th I think you should you should uh you should uh, be able to aim high in the AM Championship and get there. But just uh, before we let you go, is there anyone that you want to give a uh, shout-out to? Um, obviously, you guys for putting on the broadcast, as, as always. Um, and the Team Mad guys, as well. Um, unfortunately, I don't know the sponsors. I keep forgetting. I'm still thinking I'm an automatic mode. <laughs> but, uh, no, just everybody else. Well, there you go. Scott Malcolm there, one of your uh, team mad driver in the AM Championship. Thanks for thanks for talking to us this evening, Scott. Ah, uh, cheers, Tom. Scott Malcolm there of Team Mad. Mixed results this evening for him, but of course he's uh, not one to give up and he'll be uh, back strong next week at Suzuka, I'm sure, in the, uh, the bright yellow little MX-5 that we uh, love to see out on track. Um, fantastic little evening tonight, Tom. Um, really, really good stuff. I mean, just to round it up, what was, uh, what was probably your highlight of the night? Highlight, I think, was uh, Mr. McRitchie fighting his way through the field and showing that the uh, the AM drivers can hold it to the pros. I think for me that was the uh, that was a highlight of this evening. What about yourself? I reckon uh, Marcelo Panyan's pace was just brilliant. Um, we've seen that he was quick before, but he was just on fire tonight. Really, really straight out of the box, just on it. Gets a win, and, and yeah, it just kept up. Kept it there. Uh, can't get my words out now. Kept it up from there. It was just great to watch. Um, Alex, anything you particularly enjoyed in that one? Just uh, the interview at the end there, just to be able to hear Tom echoing through, just proved to us that how loud Tom <laughs> is, really. <laughs> yeah, and that wasn't um, that wasn't even because Scott had it playing in the background either. That was just <laughs> echoing off, off <laughs> out of Scott's headset. 
but um yeah, no, it was, a, it was a good night's race, and I thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, a little bit gutted for the big accident. Uh, was it race three or race? Two? I think it was race three, wasn't it? Because uh, yeah. I think we had a, a, a good grid for that one. So yeah, a bit bit of a shame for that one. But yeah, overall, another good night's uh, racing. No uh, Sakuba, that's for sure. That's still definitely a standout so far for the season. So Suzuka has got to um, yeah to live up to the uh, yeah the Japanese competition that we had out there. So let's see what it can do next week. Definitely. Well, it's been a pleasure to uh, broadcast for you on the iRacing Esports Network. Pleasure to work with you as well, boys. Absolutely brilliant stuff as always. And we will join you next week, Tuesday night, same time, on uh, the iRacing Esports Network, of course, and on Apex Racing TV as well. You'll be able to catch the stream afterwards. We do upload them if you want to watch them back as well. And, uh, yeah, we will see you next time. Thank you very much for a great evening. <laughs>